is going to be very interesting this morning. A couple of days ago, bright sunny skies. This morning, well, everybody's talking about the weather for a completely different reason. The heavens open during warm-up. It's not particularly heavy, but on a circuit as fast and abrasive as this one, it's definitely going to be very entertaining. Jake Sanson here with you all the way through the rest of the day as we get ourselves ready for the pre-finals in Mini, Junior and Senior X30. Only the remaining 36 drivers in each category are still with us on the starting grid. And this is the second round of a four-round championship. Last time out at Marienborg, it was incredibly close quarters racing in all three categories. And now we're gearing up for the same here in Spain. So let's talk to the pole position sitters after yesterday's exciting battles. Sandro Perez Sanchez in the Mini X30, Vinny Phillips in the Junior X30, and of course the Senior X30 driver as well, uh, Santiago Valve. And all three drivers had a lot to say after the course of racing yesterday because we had some sensational battles between all of the drivers. Uh, Mini X30 saw several drivers go for the victory. And of course, it's going to be very interesting to see how they've managed to get through it. Uh, Sandra Perez Sanchez managed to secure the pole position after some sensational battles yesterday, but not without some brilliant battles from the likes of Harrison Mackey for Great Britain and Luna Flusha, also one of the star drivers from Spain, who took her first IAMI Euro Series race heat victory yesterday. Also, Vinny Phillips uh, battling with the championship leader in Junior X30 throughout the weekend yesterday. Teofil Nal, the Frenchman, and it's looking like it's going to be those two that will fight for the victory. And of course, yesterday for the Senior X30, an almost unbeaten run for the Spanish sensation Santiago Valve. Four wins out of five, only being beaten by the 2016 world karting champion Pedro Hilbrand. So it really was sensational stuff out there over the course of proceedings. It is only a couple of minutes time before the Mini X30 race gets underway. And it is definitely going to be very tricky out there. The weather is very different now compared to what it was even yesterday when it was cooler, when we had massive cloud cover uh, over the circuit. And now we have rain uh, on track. So it's definitely going to be a very different uh, course of affairs out there on these weather circuits. Uh, Marienborg, we obviously had it to deal with. We're not used to dealing with it. Uh, here in Zuera, but of course this is the first time that the AM Euro Series has visited the circuit since 2016, so it's a wonderful return, but this is not the weather we expected. We've literally had a little bit of everything over the course of the week. We had huge strong winds over the course of Wednesday and Thursday, massive heat over the course of Friday. Yesterday, cooler, cloudy conditions, just about hanging on with warm temperatures. Today, though, we were not expecting the rain. It was certainly not forecast until Monday, and now we are here. Uh, desperately trying to figure out uh, how to quickly uh, get around the setup changes. All of the teams and drivers out there have had to do it through warm-up. The only uh, championship uh, class that hasn't actually dealt with the rain out on the circuit so far is the Mini X30s. Their warm-up session uh, was conducted under dark skies, but the rain hadn't actually fallen at that point. The Junior X30 warm-up session actually had to be red flagged uh, earlier this morning uh, because of the rain coming down. The drivers all had to come in and change from slicks to wets. So obviously it's going to be an interesting battle out there on the circuit. Looking at the track itself, while there is rain on the circuit, there's not a massive amount of standing water actually out on the circuit. Well, what it does do in this very tricky circuit surface is it's definitely going to be very, very tricky and very slippery out there. So let's uh, get ourselves ready for the action. Six races to go, two in each class, and it's time for the action to begin. So it's time to get the pre-final underway in Mini X30. It's definitely going to be a very exciting battle out there on the circuit. Here is the grid. Sandro Perez Sanchez in pole position from Luna Flusha and Roman Kamyab with Jesse Phillips on the second row. Harrison Mackey and Hugo Marti from Sacha Van Pat Bosch and Luke Tal. Dan Sofronea and Raul Fantharen from Danny Babacek and Matt Corby. Sasha Avril and Connor Clancy from Ben Smith and George Nassar. Eliwan Bianami and Alejandro Martinez from Jensen Graham and Rodrigo Sayabra. Oscar Gusho and Jason Bralich from Joseph Martin and Mick Blankaspor, Thomas Pradier and Noah Baglin from Alvaro Jimenez, Victor Galmiche, Bosco Arias, Roberto Bas, then Jonathan Landstrom, Quinton Van Leuven, Javier Brorasca, Elio Gilter, Roman Kinsinger, and Senna Munier. 
So all 36 drivers making their way to the circuit. The rain is coming down a little bit now. It's not as heavy as we were fearing it might be, but it's certainly wet enough for spray to be coming off the tyres. And that is obviously very clear indication then that it needs to be wet tyres all the way. A lot of drivers with some big shoes to fill. We've got a big problem down at the front of the grid, uh, on the dummy grid, because we've got one car that has not started. That is the young man from Lebanon, uh, George Nassar, who is at the uh, foot of the starting grid, based, of course, as he is out in the United Arab Emirates. But George Nassar has not got going, and that is a real shame, because he was one of the star drivers yesterday, and they are desperately trying to get George Nassar's cart started. Uh, ready for the start of the pre-final. Otherwise, he will have to start the final from the back of the grid. So it's an all-Spanish front row with Sandro Perez Sanchez for MDC Racing on the CRG. There is George Nassar. They're desperately trying to get his cart started in the hope that he can go racing, but they've had to put it on the trolley in order to look at it. It's not looking very hopeful for George Nassar at all as the mechanic is there trying to get the cart started from George Gibbons Motorsport, but what a shame. It looks as though George Nassar is gonna have to start the final later today from the back of the grid, and that is such a disaster for the very talented young Lebanese. But it's uh, an all Spanish front row, as I mentioned. Sandro Perez Sanchez and Luna Flucia have been the two stars of the field this weekend in the X30 Minis. They really have been exceptional. There is Luna Flucia. She's going to take her place on the front row of the starting grid. Roman Kamyab and Jesse Phillips, the two British charges that have been so solid and consistent over the course of this season and yesterday. Great to see Kamyab and Phillips right up at the sharp end. And they will be there on the second row of the grid. Fifth on the grid will be Harrison Mackey, who actually took his first IAMI Euro Series heat win yesterday. Did a fantastic job to do so as well, right from the start. Hugo Marty, Sasha Van Padbosch, and Luke Tal have been fighting their corners as well. Luke Tal starting the final from eighth position. Great work from the young Dutchman, Dan Sofrenaire, and Raoul Van Tharden in the top ten. Keep an eye on some of the other talents coming through the field that have put on a good show. Babacek was very strong yesterday, as was Matt Corby and Sasha Avril. Uh, ben Smith, the comeback kid, doing a great job. Jensen Graham, Rodrigo C Abra and Jason Bralich, all with flashes of brilliance yesterday as well. So let's see how we go off the start. Is it going to be a good start from the grid? No, it's a false start. So we go around again for the formation lap. And so, of course, we are going to have a, an interesting battle for the uh, competition again. The virtual championship uh, shows us that Sasha Van Bosch is currently leading the title race with 92 points compared to Tiziano Cugnini on 90, Ben Smith on 85. Rather sadly, one driver that isn't competing in the pre-finals and finals today is Tiziano Cugnini, the man second in the championship, who uh, rather sadly won a heat final yesterday and then was excluded for correcting his front-faring position, which means that we'll have to see him back again at Castelletto de Branduzzo on the Siete Larghi circuit. Nine degrees air temperature, very cold compared to what we've seen the previous three days. And you can see that the clouds are very broken over the circuit. There's rain on track. And the humidity, look at that, 87%. It's almost guaranteed that we're going to have rain for the majority of the morning. So it's uh, not looking very hopeful for the slick tyres that the drivers were hoping to be on ready for today. What a dramatic change of affairs uh, for this uh, start of the pre-final. Sandra Perez Sanchez and Luna Flucia taking up their positions on the front of the grid. And this is definitely going to be a very interesting uh, second round of the championship now, as if it wasn't already. And we had lots of drama yesterday. So there's going to be even more where that came from this morning. An absolutely astonishing run uh, from the drivers as they come through. Last time out, the race winner in the mini category at Marienborg after a thrilling battle in the final. Uh, it was the victory, of course, for Sasha Van Padbosch in front of Tiziano Cugnini and Ben Smith. Uh, sorry, in, in, in Roman Kamiab, I should say. What are we going to get this time? We'll find out as away we go. Sandra Perez Sanchez with a good start. Excellent start from Roman Kamyab and Harrison Mackey as well. Luna Flucia there in P4 as they come through the first corner. And it's all four Fusion Motorsport drivers and Squadron and Quartet coming through. Sandro Perez is down to second. Luna Flucia trying to get through round the outside. Now tucks in for fourth place. Sandra Perez Sanchez in second. Luna Flucia going the long way round trying to find some traction off the outside line. And through comes Hugo Marti. A great storm forward by one of the Fusions. Who is that that's come through? It is the 908. That is Luna Lucia, she's made her way to second place around the outside of Sandro Perez. And Hugo Marti is in the mix there as well with the 927. That is Harrison Mackey. But out in front, it is Roman Kamyab, who is one of the best in the wet conditions. Absolutely flawless when we saw him at Valencia in the rain. 
And as they skid their way into the left-hand hairpin in the middle of the course, it's already going beautifully as Raul Fantharen now tries to nut his way on the inside of Harrison Mackey. Harrison Mackey is held up there by Marty. But look at Roman Kamiab, he's already well clear. Sandro Perez nearly losing the cart there as he tries to get back on terms with Luna Flusia. Luna Flusia running in second. Look at Kamiab, he's already long gone. And Roman Kamiab so good in the wet. He has absolutely dominated this opening lap. And it's going to be very tough for the rest of the field to catch him in this nine lap pre-final. Roman Kamiab a country mile ahead of the rest of the field. Flusia in second place. Third position is Sandro Perez. Hugo Marti in fourth from Thuntharden, Mackie, Smith, Babacek, Van Bosch, and Jesse Phillips. So into the wet conditions they come around the far side. Luna Flusha able to use the wet karting line, the outside line to gain good traction. But Roman Kamyab really has starred in the opening stages. He's just disappeared. Two seconds clear of everybody else. So Roman Kamyab very much utilizing the wet conditions to good advantage here. If it stays like this, then he will tie for the lead of the championship with Sasha Van Padbosch. Five points clear of Ben Smith. So already a very exciting battle and a great challenge for the competitors as Roman Kamyab leads the way from Luna Flusha and Sandro Perez. Then it is Hugo Marti and Ralph and two more great Spaniards. And they are Spanish drivers all the way down to fifth position behind Roman Kamyab, the race leader. Then it is Harrison Mackey, Ben Smith and Danny Babacek, the young Czech, doing an absolutely fantastic work. Here's the run on the inside line from Raul Fantharen, and he gets through on Hugo Marti. So, a nice move there from the young Spaniard. He gets another move on the inside of Sandro Perez. Two passes in two corners from Raul Fantharen. Excellent work from the Monlau Competition driver as he now moves up into third position. And here come the squadron of Fusion Motorsport drivers. There goes Harrison Mackey. He gets the move on Hugo Marti. And we've got two drivers bearing down on them. That's Ben Smith and Sacha Van Padosh trying to get themselves back into position. And here's the move from Ralph and Tharden. Gets the run on Luna Flusha in a second place. So Ralph and Tharden gets into P2 past Luna Flusha. Flusha immediately trying to bite back and get her way back in a second position. Sandra Perez closing in as well. So there is a fantastic duel between the drivers in the wet conditions here as Roman Kamyab continues to stretch out the gap over a second a lap faster than most of his rivals. That is absolutely astonishing. So on lap three, Kamyab continues to run out in front. Raul Fantharen in second place. Luna Flusha third. Sandro Perez Sanchez in fourth position. Fifth is Harrison Mackey. Sixth is Ben Smith. Seventh is Sasha Van Padbosch. And eighth is Danny Babacek. Ninth position for Hugo Marti from Phillips, Sofronea and Luke Tal. Then it is Jensen Graham from Rodrigo Sayabra. And Eduan Bianami. Yellow flags. We've got an off on the far side of the course by the look of it. So somebody has uh, come off the course there at turn four, uh, by the look of it. I think they're continuing on on the other side of the uh, racetrack, but there have been a couple of moments there. 9.27, Harrison Mackey battling with his teammate Ben Smith and Sasha Van Padbosch is in there trying to make up some places. Look at the lead that Roman Kamiab's got on the home stretch from Ralph and Tharden and Luna Flusia. Absolutely majestic from <laughs> Roman Kamiab. He puts in a 123.7 as Sasha Van Padbosch is working his way back through the field now. He's gained two points on Roman Kamyab's tally if it stays like this. But Roman Kamyab bangs in at 123.7. That is absolutely monstrous speed compared to the others out there. Here comes Sandra Perez on the inside of Luna Flusha. Luna Flusha gets the switchback maneuver. Well done from Luna Flusha to hold on to the place there. Sandra Perez is now in trouble. Going to get a big move on the inside from Ben Smith. Ben Smith gets there and gets into fourth position. A good run from Smith. Sandra Perez tries to hold the cart right round the outside and can't quite get the inside manoeuvre past Ben Smith. So it's uh, Ben Smith, who was the absolute star of yesterday's comeback race, had an off at the start under full course yellows and fought his way back from dead last to 10th. And he is now in contention in the wet here, having moved his way up into fourth position past Sandro Perez Sanchez. Now he's got a chance to go after teammate Luna Flusha. And this is definitely going to be interesting. There's Sacha Van Padbosch, second in last year's title fight. The 902 looking very confident and very strong indeed here. Hoping to run in behind the 927 of Harrison Mackey. Is there going to be a charge forward? After the final turn, 
And on to the home stretch once again. Kamyab well clear. Van Thaden in second. Flusha in third. Here comes Ben Smith looking up the inside of his teammate. Luna Flusha gets through. Up into third position. A good run from Ben Smith. Watch out for Sandro Perez. There's a good chance that he could make the move on Flusha as well. But he bails a long way out of the corner to get the tighter line. And the two fusions are able to just sweep by around the outside. So they continue their charge forward in the rain. It's quite clear. If your name is Roman Kamyab, you're perfectly okay out front. Raul van Thaden in second place. Ben Smith is now third, having got past Luna Flusha at the hairpin. So Ben Smith into third position, gets past Luna Flusha. Good run from Ben Smith so far. Sandro Perez in fifth. Sixth is Maki. Seventh is Van Papos. Eighth is Danny Babacek. Ninth is Jesse Phillips. And tenth is Hugo Marti. Great racecraft so far. Just a little bit of a love tap there from Luda Flusha on the back bumper of Ben Smith, who of course was on the podium last time out. Good consistency from Ben Smith, keeping himself very much in the hunt for the title in this early phase of the season. And he's going to be third in the point standings if it stays like this. A great run from Ben Smith so far. Roman Kamyab and Sacha Van Padbosch, the drivers who are going to be working their magic to move their way forward. But the 9.02, Sacha Van Padbosch right on the tail of his teammate Harrison Mackey. He's making a great comeback drive here, Sacha Van Padbosch. And he's going to get a run off the final corner to move up into sixth position. A good run between these two. There's not much in it at all, but Sacha Van Padbosch keeps himself. Oh, he, de he decides to back out of it. He didn't quite get enough alongside to make the move then. Little bit of a blip on the throttle as they come through. And still Smith and Flusha battling away with Sandra Perez for the position. We've got Sasha Van Bosch being caught here rapidly by Danny Babacek. Babacek goes up the inside of both Fusion Motorsport drivers. Almost gets them both. Ends up losing ground, running wide on the far side, and he's going to lose ground to both of them. And here comes Jesse Phillips. Phillips nearly reigns on the parade here as Babacek. Turns onto the inside line of Sasha Van Bosch. Phillips continues to stay positive and looks for another opportunistic moment. So Babacek almost got past both fusions. Now Phillips is going to take on Babacek down into the braking zone. They both run wide. And Babacek just hangs on for the moment in front of Phillips. But Phillips is absolutely adamant. He's going to get this overtaking move done sooner rather than later. He is absolutely on him. Now he gets another run up the inside line. Is he going to make the move? We watch for it. And he's not quite made it. Babacek still able to keep the position for the moment. So Harrison Mackey still battling with his teammate Sacha Van Padbosch for P6. As far as Roman Kamyab is concerned, he can stay where he is. Thank you. Sacha Van Padbosch down in seventh because he will close to within two points of the championship lead if Kamyab remains first and Van Padbosch remains seventh. So that's definitely going to help out Kamyab's title attack in the AMI Euro Series 2021 in Mini X30. Luna Fuchsia all over the back of her teammate Ben Smith as they run through. And there are two more teammates from the same stable. Roman Kambiab's already onto the straight up towards turn five as these guys turn into, into four. But Raul Thantharen is actually matching the pace now of Roman Kamyab. In fact, having said that, Thantharen and Smith are actually quicker than Kamyab in the early phase of the lap. So they were the fastest drivers in the first sector. So it's not all going Kamyab's way at the moment. He's got the lead, but they are catching him. And they are catching him fairly rapidly, actually. 26-8 for Kamyab on that lap. In the first sector, Ben Smith does a 26-5. So he is catching very quickly indeed. Three tenths of a second down on uh, Kamyab on the last sector. We'll have a look and see how Thantharden and Smith are going. But of course, Kamyab could well just be balancing the pace. He doesn't really have to push too hard. He's got back onto the pace again in the middle sector. So just a blip for Roman Kamyab. Nothing major. Good to see that he is uh, controlling the pace as much as he possibly can from his current position. Harrison Mackey running in front of Sasha Van Padbosch. They come off the final turn again and onto the main straight. Raul Van Tharden running second. Third place for Ben Smith and Luna Flusha in fourth. There's a good opportunity with two laps to go here for Luna Flusha to get back into contention. Good moves through the field from several drivers. Rodrigo Siabra now up into 13th position, having got past Jensen Graham. And there's good moves from Victor Galmish and Bosco Arias. They're up 13 places apiece. So they've made great progress in the wet, as has Javier Broasca, who was in originally the second chance heat and finished third. He's now up to 23rd, so he's doing a magnificent job to fight back. Some good drives through the field all the way through. 
It's not just about the race leaders, it's also about the drivers in the midfield. You've got to look at every positive these guys can take. Rodrigo Seabra up seven places. Jensen Graham up five places and a spin for Flusha. Flusha gets on the curb and spins the cart. Oh, Jesse Phillips cannons through. And it looks like Babacek's going to get through on the inside as well. What a shame for Luna Flusha. Just got two wheels onto the curb. Spins the cart around. She manages to get back on turn with Babacek. Babacek gets through again on the undercut though. And here comes the 944 of Dan Sofronea to make the overtaking move. Luna Flusha so close to getting a top four finish. It could have been a podium finish even for the pre-final. And unfortunately now Sofronea gets the move there nicely on Babacek. Flusha has spun away down the order. Final lap for Kamyab from Thunthardon and Smith. And Sandra Perez now overtakes and gets into fourth position. Fifth place for Harrison Mackey. Sofronea and Babacek having a great duel down the main straight. That's round the outside of them. Luna Flusha gets past Sofronea and keeps it going to hold on in front of Babacek, does she? What a fight back from Luna Flusha. She may have made the mistake, but she's getting straight back on with it as Sofronea now ducks for the outside line. Babacek is in the mix there as well. Babacek holds the inside. What about Flusha? She's going to get the switchback maneuver and get back alongside. And Luna Flusha is going to move past Babacek. Good recovery from Flusha. Everybody falls down. It's about how fast you get back up again. And Flusha's doing the best job she can to recover. Now, Raul Fanthardon has just set the fastest first sector of anybody in the race. But unfortunately for him, it's going to be too little too late. Because Roman Kamya, there he is, has controlled the pace from the front. Everybody needs to do some more wet weather testing days because this man is the king in the rain. He showed it in Valencia at the Winter Cup back in March. And here he is again doing the fairest job possible in the wet conditions. Roman Kamya prays for rain because he's so good at it. And he proves it with a brilliant victory in the pre-final in the pouring rain at Zuera. Excellent run from Roman Kamya. He's back on top. And everybody else needs to be very, very worried about how to catch him in the final. Roman Kamyab, pole position for the final with a victory in the pre-final. Excellent run. Raul Fanthard in second, Ben Smith in third, and Sasha Van Bosch retakes the lead of the Drivers' Championship by five points ahead of Roman Kamyab with a victory in the final. In the victory in the... Uh, <laughs> With a victory in the pre-final, Roman Kamyab is now five points back from Sasha Van Bad Bosch. He won the final, of course, Sasha at uh, Marienborg. But he has a chance to go for it in the final later. Excellent run from Roman Kamyab. Terrific drive. Excellent display in the wet. And there's more to come in the final. Just how big will the gap be then? Some terrific drives through the field. Some great recovery drives as well from drivers uh, improving their position rapidly. And we're going to talk you through all of those. The grid looks, the grid for the final looks nothing like the grid from uh, the pre-final. So it really is a, a big chop and change. First of all, though, just the one retirement. And that was George Nassar who didn't make the start. So well done to everybody else. Roman Kamyab takes the victory from Ralph and Tharden and Ben Smith. Sasha Van Bosch and Harrison Mackey. Luke Tal and Sandra Perez. Jesse Phillips is eighth. Luna Flusha is ninth. Dan Sofronea is tenth. Rodrigo Seabra up to 11th. And then 12th place for Hugo Marti. Danny Babacek and Jensen Graham from Alejandro Martinez and Bosco Arias. Eluan Bianami is 17th in front of Victor Galmiche. 19th for Oscar Gouchot in front of Mick Blankespoor. Sasha Avril is 21st in front of Javier Broasca. Thomas Pradier in front of Youssef Martin. Jason Bralich and Jonathan Landstrom. Matt Corby and Roberto Bas from Quinton van Leuven. Roman Kinsinger, uh, Alvaro Jimenez, Connor Clancy, Elio Gilter, Senna Munier and Noah Baglan. And then the non-starter was George Nassar, the young man from Lebanon who races under the UAE flag. But uh, hopefully he will be out in time for the final. Very unfortunate that he missed his opportunity. But there's going to be more great races from the drivers throughout. Absolutely extraordinary performances uh, from the competitors there in the Mini X30. Particularly, of course, uh, from Roman Kamyab. Just so incredible to uh, see them in their position. So uh, we can obviously hear from the pole position sitters uh, from the previous uh, races. Uh, it's been a very, very tricky situation. You will hear still from uh, Sandro Perez Sanchez. 
uh, from his position earlier on. Oh, no, we don't have time. I do apologize. The yellow flag is currently waving at the end of the pit lane. So they're going to go straight out onto the circuit for the pre-final. That just shows you how slow the circuit is uh, in the wet conditions. The Junior X30 pre-final is about to get underway. So that will see the pole position sitter, Vinny Phillips, take up his position on the front of the grid with Ivan Arias in second position on the starting grid alongside him. And the Frenchman, the championship leader, Teofil Nile, will be in third position on the grid. Alongside him will be the Japanese star, Kanato Lee. So X30 Junior, the pre-final begins. And it's going to be absolutely extraordinary. How are these guys going to go in the wet conditions? And will it be another complete lottery compared to the starting grid? Vinny Phillips in pole position for Strawberry Racing with Ivan Arias alongside him in second. Teofil Nal is third from Canato Lee. Dennis Kudavali and Thomas Strauven from Arthur Poulain and Brandon Carr. Eric Genet and Paul Cayos from Adrian Mustienis and Bart Harrison. Finn McLaughlin and Adrian Klosmanil from Zach Scular and Juan Aluja. Kimi Jerome and Jan Duran from Mikel Marino and Zachary David. Adrian Maliero and Thibaut Ramakas from Gaspard Lagaye and Ethan Ischier. Noah Montero and Alexis Constant. Jan Paral and Iko Segret from Dan Dalakian and Kevin Rabin. Then Sam van Voskulen and Eduardo Dominguez, Aaron Ferrazzano, Matteo Quintarelli, Arthur Valsort, and Adam Rahali. That is your 36 card grid, and it represents all over the world. Incredible to see so many amazing drivers from all over Europe and even from further afield into Asia and Africa as well. We have drivers from all over Great Britain, Spain, France, uh, Italy as well, I do believe, Switzerland, the Netherlands. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, Zachary David from the Philippines. We have Zach Scular and Matteo Quintarelli from the United Arab Emirates and Adam Rahali from uh, Algeria. Don't forget, of course, as well, Noah Montero from Portugal. So a fabulous international grid of drivers in the IAMI Euro Series. It is the pinnacle of IAMI X30 racing, this category. This, coupled with the international final, is where everybody wants to race because this is where the drivers come from far and wide to compete. Now, the story yesterday, Teofil Nile was the man who was the class of the field from time qualifying and, of course, from the races as well. But the man who has risen to the challenge uh, in yesterday's uh, junior heats to uh, try and beat him has definitely been Vinny Phillips. Teofil Nile was the king on Friday. Vinny Phillips was the king yesterday. So now it's uh, going to be a straight fight between them. Teofil Nile picked up a front fairing penalty, I do believe, in one of the races, which dropped him to third on the grid. He would originally have been second. But as a result of that, uh, Teofil Nile will now start directly behind Vinny Phillips for the Strawberry Racing Team on the inside line in his Tony Kart. And it's definitely going to be a fascinating battle for the Junior X30 pre-final. Vinny Phillips hoping to secure his place at the front end of the field with his new berth, of course, at uh, Strawberry Racing. Great to see the messages coming in from everybody. Hope everybody's having a great uh, luck. Ekaterina Lucia watching along. Good luck to the Swiss drivers. You've definitely got a couple to cheer for uh, in this particular race. Gaspard Lagaye and Ethan Ischier along with Kevin Rabin. So hopefully the uh, Swiss contingent will do you proud, Ekaterina. Good to have you on the stream once again. 11 laps of the Zweda circuit. Vinny Phillips watching the battle. I have a feeling this is going to be a false start, and it is indeed. Vinny Phillips was just a little bit too fast on the uptake out of the final turn there. So the drivers will get to go round one more time with feeling. Great to have everybody watching along from the YouTube stream and from the Facebook as well. Do send your questions and your messages and your comments and uh, 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 good greetings and your messages of support to people. And we will happily get them across to uh, those drivers who are out on circuit and those who are going to be out on circuit. Fascinating that we've had a little bit of everything over the course of uh, proceedings. It's been uh, very interesting to see how the weather has evolved over the course of the last four days. But the drivers now just have to get on with it and hope that there's going to be a strong day at the races for them once again. And it's up to Vinny Phillips and Ivan Arias to control the pace of the field from the front of the grid. But it's all on Vinny Phillips, really, the pole sitter. He uh, said to me yesterday when we uh, spoke about it, he was quite excited about the prospect, quite uh, eager for the challenge, but he knew it was going to be very, very tough. He never expected to be battling with Teofil Nile for the front end of the field, especially when everybody in Junior X30 acknowledges that Teofil Nile has got incredible speed coming into this 2021 campaign. I don't think anybody really expected to see it at Marienborg, but now that he's shown it there, he also showed it at Zwera, so everyone knows that he is the title favourite. 
uh, early doors, of course, at least. We need to figure out what happens over the course of the X30 Junior Weekend here at Suera. They come off the turn. Is this going to be a faster start? We will find out as they come through the final turn. Is this going to be a good start to the first corner? No. And again. Well, I think that's, uh, again, a reaction. It has been said many times this weekend that the drivers just accelerate far too quickly out of the final turn. And the race has been red flagged. Now, this is at the discretion of the clerk of the course, Martin Bean. I was speaking with him earlier this morning, and he stated, you know, the reason that these, uh, this has been happening essentially is due to the reactions of the drivers off the final turn. He wants to make sure that the drivers are actually starting correctly out of the final turn. And it's about the timing of when they hit the throttle coming off the final turn. They need to keep very, very solid and very, very uh, structured in their two lines uh, as they come through around the course. And uh, a couple of times over the course of the weekend, the drivers have basically been hitting the throttle far too early as they come off the final turn. And if it happens a few times uh, in the build-up to the race, uh, then the clerk of the course, Martin Bean, has chosen to uh, stop the race and remind the drivers where they need to be accelerating from, especially if they get off the grid too early. So we're under red flag conditions here due to there being two false starts uh, here at Zwerda. And obviously, the clerk of the course, Martin Bean, has been making a note of this several times over the weekend. So the drivers will come to the grid and they will get uh, a lecture from the headmaster. And obviously uh, they will be taught exactly how to go about the uh, art of starting. It seems uh, rather haphazard, of course, from the drivers, but Martin Bean is there along with Gonzalo Planta on the main straight. And they will uh, bring the drivers to the starting grid, tell them to cut the engines, and then they will have a conversation on the grid with Martin Bean. In the pouring rain, yes. It doesn't change just because it's raining. So the competitors will rise out of their carts. They will have a conversation with the clerk of the course, Martin Bean, who will tell them exactly how it is. So let's catch up with what happened yesterday evening when we spoke to our three pole sitters for the pre-final. Sandro Perez Sanchez of Spain, uh, Vinny Phillips of Great Britain, and Santiago Valve, also of Spain. In the first race, I had to start from the outside line, but I made my way to third very quickly. The leaders disappeared, but I eventually caught them up and I managed to overtake them at turn three. Then I defended during the closing laps until the final meters at the finish line, but I lost out by a few hundredths of a second. In the second race, I led from the front on the inside, but because I opened the door early, I lost out and dropped to third. But because of a penalty for another driver, I ended up finishing second. In the final heat, it was the same again at the start, and I managed to take the lead because I had everything under control. I started from the front, I led in the opening lap, but then I was overtaken, so I decided to sit behind him throughout and wait till the end to pass him. But then I had another driver who managed to pass me, so it was very close. Fortunately, in the final corner, they had a crash, so I could get them back. And this was enough to secure pole position for the races tomorrow. The team plans were to push now um, for the whole race and see how far we could get away from the other pack and we did that. And then for the second heat, I told my mechanic I think I could go in on him because I think I could, uh, I was fast enough to do the time and go past him and work together. And then I saw the last lap and I started to defend and I managed to hold my line and a good feeling to beat Nile twice, considering he is the ch uh, championship leader. And yeah, I did the same thing in the light I did in heat two. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tough one because he's starting behind me. It's, like, it's going to be like the heats because he, I started behind him and now he's going to start behind me in the pre-final. So it's going to be a pretty tough one. We've had a lot of rhythm all the way through the weekend. I think we knew that if we did well in qualifying, we'd be at the front. I was able to stay in the lead in the opening laps and this gave me the opportunity to get through to the final. Being in pole position definitely gives me a better chance because I can conserve the tyres for the final. It'll help me to have more grip towards the end of the race, and that should help me secure victory. So it's very interesting to note that these drivers have obviously been battling through the dry conditions over the last two days. Now that they're here in the wet conditions, we already saw from the earlier Mini X30 pre-final that the battle was very, very tough for the drivers to sustain the same sort of order that they had yesterday. Roman Kamiab taking the victory in the wet conditions of the pre-final. Now they're about to get started and we'll head back down to the circuit uh, where the drivers are back in their carts, ready for the start of the uh, pre-final. Vinnie Phillips from the front of the grid 
and Averarias in second position. They've obviously been given their gentle reminder from uh, the headmaster uh, just how to go racing uh, off the starting line. Obviously, occasionally it is very difficult, and they will say, you know, it's a very tricky prospect uh, in these conditions. Vinny Phillips is struggling to get started. There he goes. My goodness. That could have been a very dramatic start to the race. For a moment there, Vinny Phillips just unable to get the cart started. Then he managed to do it. But that could have been very dramatic if the uh, pole position sitter was unable to get going. Sorry to set the heart strings a flutter there, everybody. But that was uh, a very nasty potential moment. Massive following for Finn McLaughlin on the Facebook stream from Fiona McLaughlin and, of course, for Aaron Dalton. Let's go, Finn, doing the Irish proud. And we have uh, Nicolas Soke and Alexis peset perso who are cheering on Teofil Nal. Go, 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 gas, gas. So great to see the uh, fan base are watching uh, from all over Europe. It is, of course, uh, for the IAMI Euro Series. And I'm sure further afield as well. We've got people watching uh, all over uh, the continents, uh, all over the world here, because there is a great international interest uh, for the IAMI Euro Series. And, of course, the, with the IAMI X30 brand being global, uh, there's always uh, an expectation, always uh, fans of the sport wanting to watch uh, how the battle plays out. No matter where they race IAMI X30, the Euro Series is where they would love to compete one day because it's a stone's throw away and a ticket to the international finals, which take place in the autumn every year. And of course, we'll have the I Games later this year as well in Portimao in Portugal, which ended the season in 2020. And we're looking forward to that as we continue to battle for the IAMI Euro Series crown. They need to be a little bit uh, circumspect from the start. Is this going to be the good getaway this time from Vinnie Phillips? We will find out. Green, let's race up to the first corner. Vinnie Phillips with a good start. Teofield now trying to get through on the inside nice and early. He gets up in a second position. So a good start from Teofield. Oh, spin. Two cards go. That is Finn McLaughlin. What a shame. Finn McLaughlin has gone along with Joanna Lugia. So Finn McLaughlin goes down to the back of the field and he's banging his helmet in frustration there. Poor Finn McLaughlin. Teofield now goes for the lead and Teofield now gets into first position. Vinnie Phillips alongside. And no, that's Canato Lee. That's Canato Lee that's shot up. My goodness, Canato Lee leading the race from Vinnie Phillips. So the two teammates are one and two. Ivan Arias in third position. Is that Teofield now down in fourth position? No, it's not. It's the 99 that's in position. That is Thomas Stralven. So Thomas Stralven has worked his way forward. Here comes Vinnie Phillips. He takes the lead. Alongside him comes Canato Lee to get him back again. The racing is absolutely frenetic between these two up front as Canato Lee out in front of Vinnie Phillips. Third position for Alvin Arias. What has happened to Teofil Nile? He is down the order. I think he's down at about sixth position. So not a great start for the Frenchman who leads the championship. But this is going to be an absolutely sensational battle between Canato Lee and Vinnie Phillips. Another driver who is so strong in the wet, Canato Lee. And he has bombed his absolutely bounced his way into the lead of the race and now he charges forward so Canato Lee in front of Vinnie Phillips at the line Avan Arias in third position from Strauven Carr, Harrison, Teofil Nal is down in seventh, not a great start for the Frenchmen as they run wide oh the 20 going off on the grass goodness me not a lot of room for Arthur Poulain to keep the cart running he was fortunate there oh there's an off in the background now that's one of the car republics going off now, who is that rejoining way down the order? That might be Zachary David. No, it's the 51, actually. That is Dennis Kudivali. So Dennis Kudivali has gone off there and manages to rejoin right in front of Gaspard Lagaye, who dives on the inside line. A great run there. For, oh, no, sorry. That's Kevin Rabin, his teammate. I do apologize. Kevin Rabin is the one who gets there on the inside. Three wide as they come off the turn as Matteo Quintarelli gets in there with the 62 of Kimi Duron. Three wide again. Quintarelli dives for the inside. They nearly run wide. Goodness me. Everybody jostling for position in the back of the pack. It's not easy to keep your foot in. And everybody just trying to get their way through. It's absolute skittles in the middle of the field in the wet conditions as everybody tries to get a little bit of traction. Big run on the inside from Rodriguez as he dives through on Juan Aluja. And then a run wide there from Daniel Delakian as he gets onto the grass, diving up the inside. That's one of the VDKs trying to come through. The 83, I think that is, of Adrian Klosmanil. Back to the front, and Canato Lee in front of Vinnie Phillips. Ivan Arias is 1.5 back already. Thomas Strauven doing a great job in fourth position, the Belgian, as he runs through in position. And then P5 is Bart Harrison in front of Teofil Nahl, who's got back into sixth place. Then Brandon Carr from Gaspard Lagaye, Paul Caos, and then in 49, that is Adrian Maliero. So an excellent run so far. 
as Zachary David finds himself in 11th place ahead of Eric Genet and Adrian Mustienes. Ethan Ischier is up to 14th place now, having got past Mikel Mourinho and Noah Montero. And then we have Adam Rahali. Goodness me, Adam Rahali has shot up from the back of the grid to 17th. Here comes Straubin on the inside line now of Rias. And Bart Harrison might get them both. But Straubin is up to third. So it's a strawberry racing one, two, and three as Ivan Arias holds the door shut for Bart Harrison. No way are you getting through. Harrison tries again, and Teofil Nahl is there or thereabouts. That cheeky move up the inside that worked so brilliantly yesterday in the dry is not going to work today as Bart Harrison dives for the inside of Arias and gets through. So Bart Harrison now into fourth position behind the strawberry racing trio. So Canato Lee out in front of Vinnie Phillips, third place Thomas Straubert. The guys in white green and blue doing an absolutely fantastic job third position for Thomas Straubin Bart Harrison in fourth position then Ivan Elias in fifth place from Teofil now a run wide from Straubin but Harrison is not able to get the undercut maneuver because Straubin is just taking his normal wet line and now Harrison dives for the inside line in the hope he can get past Straubin Straubin hesitates and Harrison is through Bart Harrison into third position and through come Teofil Nahl and Ivan Elias at the expense of Thomas Straubin through as well goodness me that's the 84 of Brandon Carr Brandon Carr getting stuck in Arias on the inside of Teofil Nahl and a spin from Gaspard Lagaye Gaspard Lagaye spins as he tries to get himself into the mix there what a shame for the young Swiss who is doing an amazing job he manages to get back through. Oh my goodness, that was one heck of a recovery. Making his way through on the inside there of Ethan Ischia. Eric Genet doesn't want to know. So Eric Genet wants the place back again. And Adrian Mustienes is almost getting run out of road. Tefil now battling with Brandon Carr. Brandon Carr sweeps on the inside. They bang wheels. Tefil now keeps it on the outside. And now Brandon Carr swings back for the inside line and takes the place away. But Tefil now has got good momentum to try and get him back again. Now we've got great battles in the midfield as well. 25 uh, in the mix there. That is Ethan Ischier. And having a battle with Adrian Mustienis. Here comes Teofil now on the inside of Brandon Carr in a turn one. Gets there. Watch out for Thomas Straubin. Brandon Carr makes the switch back across in turn one. And he's going to try and make the move on the inside of Teofil now. Now takes the wet line round the outside. Thank you very much. I'll have that. Brilliant race craft from Teofil now. Brandon Carr tries to get up the inside and he's going to get some support from Straubin. He skeets across the line of Teofil Nahl and Straubin passes them both. Brandon Carr gets the acceleration out of the turn and Brandon Carr gets alongside. Straubin holds the inside line for the hairpin. But Carr gets there. Brandon Carr holds on. Excellent driving. And Teofil Nahl pops up the inside of Thomas Straubin and shuts the door. Good work from Teofil Nahl. And he gestures to Straubin. Work with me. Work with me. Straubin's not listening. He goes for the inside line. And Teofil now cuts straight back up the middle and gets the position back again. Nice driving from Teofil now. Now in behind Brandon Carr, who's doing a great job here in the wet conditions. And here comes Bod Chaos, trying to get his move on the inside of Thomas Straubin. Bod Chaos can't quite make it stick. At least he knows where the water is likely to drain over the course of the weekend, uh, over the course of the race, because he knows the circuit better than other drivers. But even he will not have a massive amount of experience of driving at Zwerda in the wet. It doesn't happen terribly often. Very unusual day at the office today. Canato Lee in front of Vinnie Phillips by a second. Bart Harrison in third. Ivan Arias in fourth position. Brandon Carr in P5 from Teofil Nahl and Thomas Straubin. What a battle this is in Junior X30 as Bart Harrison sets the fastest lap of the race, having got into third place. He's now chasing down the two drivers up front. Tearfield now in P6, trying to get one over on Brandon Carr. Oh, looks like somebody's lost a chain guard there. Well, something has certainly come off the cart and ended up on the, uh, on the curb there. That's an interesting uh, situation. I think uh, Brandon Carr was looking at it to see whose it was. Or at least try and figure out, was that mine? No, it's not yours, mate. You're still going on perfectly strong. So Teofil now trying to find his way on Brandon Carr. Carr is keeping it nice and planted in the corner. So Brandon Carr hanging on to things. I think we've got one retirement from the race. Uh, that is Iko Segret. Unfortunately, he will start the final from the back of the grid. And so the, re the race continues on for Brandon Carr trying to hold on in front of Teofil Nahl. But this is a very, very close battle for the competitors as they continue on the far side of the course and now back onto the home straight. Canato Lee and Vinnie Phillips, 1.3 seconds apart now. Bart Harrison is raining down on them, though. He is pushing to try and close down the gap. Ivan Arias in fourth from Carr, Niall, Straubin, Kaios. 
Uh, here comes the battle further back. This is Eric Genet in 13th. And what a train this is. You've got Otto Poulain in there ahead of Kevin Robin and Ethan Ischier. This is one heck of a tussle for position. Eric Genet hanging on to it. Great to see the midfield battles as well as the drivers up front. Because you really get to see some good squabbles in the midfield and in the wet in particular. Here comes the bid on the inside line from Noah Montero, I think, trying to come through. Oh, no, sorry. That is Otto Poulain. A couple of positions back from this, of course. Montero is the car up the road from this. Here comes Kevin Robin making his bid back on the inside of Poulain. Poulain goes for the switchback maneuver and gets it straight away. You really can try some interesting tricks in the wet, and these guys are doing it everywhere they can. Dennis Kudavali trying to get up alongside Adrian Mustienis side by side. Robin versus Poulain. They bang wheels, and here comes the 25 into the mix. That's Ethan Ischia. Runs Poulain out of road. Ethan Ischia is not going to be. Uh, very much a friend of Arthur Poulain from that one. Eric Genet runs wide. Here comes the move from uh, Sinovan Serlin. I think that is trying to come through on the inside line. Uh, Sam Van Voskulen, I should say. My apologies. It's Sam Van Voskulen in the juniors. Sinovan Serlin's in the seniors. I do apologize. So Sam Van Voskulen having a movement there. Teofil Nahl on the inside of Brandon Carr. He gets back into fifth position. So a good run from Teofil Nahl. Goodness me, it's absolute squabbles going on in the midfield as well as up at the front. As Teofil now holds the position for Brandon Carr, goes wide, hits the grass, and that's the chance for Brandon Carr to get back. Teofil now back on the undercut, gets the run out the turn. Great squabble between these two. And Brandon Carr is still trying his best to get one over on Teofil now. They run wide because that's where the uh, main body of the water is on the circuit, just on the off uh, part of the line. So this is where Teofil now is going to try and close up on Ivan Arias. Running wide once again, back on the power. So slippery in these conditions. The cart wants to swap ends with you at every opportunity. You've got to be absolutely in command of the momentum, the center of gravity, where the tires are biting into the water on the road. So tricky, Tefil now sliding the cart in. He'd make an amazing Andros Trophy champion, the way he's sliding through with great conviction. Absolutely amazing stuff from Tefil now. French rally cross, anybody? Tefil now's already got it nailed. Onto the main straight. And Teofil Nile is closing in on Ivan Arias in the hope that he can make this one count in his favor. There is Gaspard Lagaye coming into through. There's Noah Montero in the black victory lane karting cart. And now these two have broken clear a little bit. Robin and Ischia. Then Sam Van Voskulen. Now Teofil Nile has caught up to Ivan Arias. There's a good chance here as Bart Harrison sets the fastest lap of the race in his bid to close up on Vinnie Phillips. Round the outside, that is Juan Alugia battling it out with Adam Rahali. And here's the move from Teofil Nile. He gets through on Ivan Arias. Can he hold it round the outside? Arias gets back through. Teofil Nile shoots right back up the inside. Arias gets back in on the acceleration. Amazing battle between these two. Teofil Nile tries again. Here he goes on the inside of Arias. Holds the curb, and ES gets straight back on the switch. And now Brandon Carr getting up the inside of Teofil Nile. Thank you, mate. He comes wide. Teofil Nile gets back on the inside. Excellent racing. This is how it should be. Tooth the nail for every corner. Elbows out, pushing like crazy. And here comes Thomas Strauven. He's back for a bit more. On the inside of Carr. Almost gets alongside Teofil Nile as well. Can't hold it in front of Brandon Carr. So Canato Lee leads the race up front. Vinny Phillips is being caught rapidly by Bart Harrison. Fourth place is Avan Arias. Teofil now tried to get him on that lap. Couldn't make it stick. And there's Thomas Strauven now ahead of Brandon Carr with Paul Cayos trying to close in on them. So Paul Cayos is going to try and get into seventh place. Brandon Carr makes the bid on Thomas Strauven. Dives up the inside line. Needs to shut the door. Does so. Well done to Brandon Carr. Not an easy move to pull off in the wet. But Paul Cayos is trying to get this move done as well for seventh position past the Belgian. And Paul Cayos in the Fernando Alonso Racing Colours of Espana doing a great job here. The Colours of Oviedo running very well there in number 33 for Paul Cayos as he tries to work his way forward past Thomas Strauven. Here's Teofil Nahl. Side by side with Avan Arias, well covered by Arias. He's not going to be outfoxed easily. And the Espana doing a great job to hold on in front of Teofil Nahl. Nile is ruthless. Nile gets the inside line, but watch Arias right round the outside. He knows where the grip is. Excellent from Evan Arias. That was so well taken from the Spaniard. He holds on there in fourth position behind Bart Harrison. 
But we're about to go into the final lap and it's now or never for Bart Harrison to catch Vinnie Phillips because there's only six tenths of a second between them. Here they go. And across the line, it's about that. So Phillips in front of Harrison, but this fourth place battle is a five-way freight train and it's Arias, Nile, Car, Stralven, Chaos. And not far behind them, you've got Adrian Maliero having fought his way up from 21st on the grid to 9th. Great fights through. Zach David up to 10th from 20th. Gaspard Lagaye up 12 places despite his spin. And Noah Montero has fought all the way to 12th from 25th on the grid. Great fight backs through the field. Also from Kevin Rabin, he's up 17 places and 10 places made up from Ethan Ischier. He comes to Airfield now, trying to make his move now on Avalarias. And Bon Kios going for the move on the inside of Thomas Strauven, and he gets it. So Bod Chaos is up a position. He gets up into seventh place. But here comes Teofil Nal. He wants the place. He wants the move. Ivan Anias is going to try and hold this round the outside. Protects. Teofil Nal moves to cover. Anias gets back alongside. He knows where the grip is around the outside. Can he hold it? Get up right on this street track on the inside. Ivan Anias gets back in on the inside of Teofil Nal. Nal comes back to the inside. Anias holds it round the outside. Brilliant racing. Brandon Carr now got a chance here on Teofield Null. Can he go on the inside? Null tries to get in on Arias. Arias keeps it, but Canato Lee takes the victory in front of Vinnie Phillips and Bart Harrison. We look back. Who's going to be fourth? It's close. Teofield Null's getting alongside. Arias trying to move to cover. Arias has got it from Teofield Null and Brandon Carr. Excellent racing. Just add a little bit of rain to the Zuera circuit and you get an absolute showdown. Brilliant. Ivan Arias, Teofil Nal and Brandon Carr scrap over fourth place to the line. And there was less than three tenths of a second between them all. Very close indeed between Arias and Nile at the flag. But Canato Lee, take a bow, sir, from fourth on the grid. He stormed his way to the lead on lap one and never, ever lost it. Great drive from the Japanese star who has moved across to the Strawberry Racing Team. Races under the British flag and, of course, uh, is uh, under British license when he races. But Kanato Lee, they call him Bruce. And after today, no surprise. Enter the Dragon here at Suera. He is on pole for the final. Excellent stuff from Kanato Lee. Wonderful, wonderful drive in front of Vinnie Phillips in second place and Bart Harrison in third. Great performances up front. Ivan Arias in fourth position in front of Teofil Nal and Brandon Carr. Paul Chaos is next up in seventh place from Thomas Strauven, Adrian Maliero and Zachary David. Gaspard Lagaye in 11th in front of Noah Montero. Ethan Ischier and Kevin Rabin from Kimi Duron and Arta Poulain. Then Juan Alugia in front of a brilliant fight back from Adam Rahali. He made up the most places, 18 places gained. Sam van Voskulen in 19th place and Matteo Quintarelli in a brilliant 20th. Denis Kudavali slips to 21st and Adrian Mustienis drops to 22nd. Alexi Constant in front of Mikel Mourinho, Daniel Dalakian and Thibaut Ramakas. Eric Genet, unfortunate, down in 27th from Aaron Ferrazzano and Arthur Valsort. And then Adrian Klosmanil, Zach Scular, Jan Paral, Jan Duran, Eduardo Dominguez, and a rather unfortunate case of affairs for Finn McLaughlin after his lap one spin down at the back with Ico Segret, who failed to finish. Very dramatic stuff and obviously very, very exciting. And it's not going to be... Lo oh, now that is... That's a very unusual end to the race for Adam Rahali. So Adam Rahali has parked it post-flag. That's very unusual. So uh, a big problem there for the PB cart driver. So Adam Rahali actually, has actually parked the cart post-race. He finished uh, in uh, 18th position. So a, a big disaster at the end of the race there for Adam Rahali as the 68 essentially ends up uh, being parked up and out of, the, out of the action, out of contention. So whether he's just had a mechanical malady right at the end there or something else has come a cropper at the very last, a very unusual situation there for the drivers. But a fascinating state of affairs, fascinating situation uh, for the competitors. But an absolutely astonishing uh, situation there as uh, he's now going to be obviously recovered and that will give us a tiny bit of a delay uh, before we get back into the action once more. 
And it's going to be a very interesting race coming up for the Senior X30 race. You can see the rain coming down. It's very constant here at Zuera. And it's uh, definitely not what we expected. We weren't really predicted anything until uh, Monday. So it, I would suspect that this is going to be an opportunity for a lot of drivers that are down the field in Senior X30, a chance to make a big recovery. And that is certainly how the X30 seniors are going to be taking this opportunity. There are a lot of drivers in this field who are down the order from where they expected to be. Santiago Valve is pole position. Uh, he is alongside Oliver Greenall. The two drivers have been very quick over the course of the weekend. Uh, then it is Callum Bradshaw, who will be next up on the grid. Pedro Hiltbrand in fourth place. So the two world champions in the field uh, are going to be there on the front, on the second row, sorry, of the starting grid. Fifth place will be Clayton Ravenscroft. Very consistent and solid work from him this weekend. And uh, sixth position on the grid, Thomas Fleming. Expect to see big things from him in this race. Then Clarissa Dervich in seventh position. Uh, Kean Shields will be there in eighth place. Great races from them so far this weekend. Ninth position for Onzo Levesque, always a factor. And Henke Kalteren in tenth position. There are some big names down the order. Just behind them, you've got four big names. Mark Kimber, Sam Belota, Aaron Walker, and Ellie Goldstein all the way back to 14th place. Plenty of drivers with a great chance to fight back in this wet race. And let's not forget that even further back from that, You've got Morgan Porter down in 23rd, Westover 24th, Matilda Olsen is 26th, and 31st is Guy Cunnington. So here is the grid in full. Santiago Valve and Oliver Greenall from Callum Bradshaw and Pedro Hiltbrand, Clayton Ravenscroft and Thomas Fleming from Clarissa Dervich and Kean Shields, Enzo Levec and Henke Kalterin from Mark Kimber and Sam Balota, Aaron Walker and Ellie Goldstein, Benjamin Hovelak and Eloy Gonzalez from Yanis Steven Haydens and Ivan Bataya, Lazar Latigo and Hugo Natteril from Kalai Atkins and Urbelt Moore, Morgan Porter and Louis Westover from Enzo Peugeot and Matilda Olsen, Noah Maton, Evan Becerra, Daniel Antunes and Norris Leceptua from Guy Cunnington and Teresa Babichkova, Luke Lucas Talman, Onzo La Cruz, Alexandra Monod, and Rivaldo van der Westerlaken. 36 drivers, and they are the last ones remaining in Senior X30 out of the whopping 79 drivers that entered this weekend. So now they go to the rolling formation lap. Apparently, the one driver who's not in the mix, or at least is not transponding, is Clayton Ravenscroft. Now, I'm fairly sure Clayton Ravenscroft is out there. So uh, for whatever reason, there's something awry with his transponder, but we'll have to double-check and figure out what the situation is with uh, Clayton Ravenscroft's car. He should be there in the KR Sport. We'll have to double-check as he comes around. Actually, looking at it, I don't think he is there. So something has happened for Clayton Ravenscroft. He should be starting seventh on the grid. So it doesn't appear as if he's there. I'm not sure what on earth is going on. And I can't see him in the holding area. I can't see anything going on. But Clayton Ravenscroft appears to be missing uh, from the grid. And he's meant to be P5 on the starting grid. That is absolutely astonishing. And I've just been informed that he missed the gate. That is absolutely astonishing. So Clayton Ravenscroft has failed to get to the, uh, the gate in time. And that is an absolute travesty for Clayton Ravenscroft. So, uh, an absolute disaster. What an absolutely astonishing situation. So, uh, that is uh, the absence there. A big absence from Clayton Ravenscroft as he is uh, there on the starting grid, or was meant to be there on the starting grid in fifth position. But he missed the gate, and that is astonishing. If you miss uh, getting to the gate on time, if you don't get there on time, you will miss the race. It's as simple as that. So, now Clayton Ravenscroft will have to start the final from the back of the grid. So there's only 35 drivers now competing in this one. Santiago Valve from Oliver Greenall, Callum Bradshaw and Pedro, uh, Pedro Hilbrand. Thomas Fleming will be alone on row three. And then Clarissa Dervich and Kean Shields, Enzo Levesque and Henke Kauterin from Kimber, Balota, Walker, Goldstein and the rest. They come off the turn. This is far too quick, surely. And uh, the drivers will come through. And it's a false start. Why are we surprised? That was a very quick start indeed from Santiago Valve. I think he was very eager to uh, get away from the rest of the Senior X30 field and uh, certainly didn't slow the field up enough. So uh, a false start there from Santiago Valve. We had this, of course, with the uh, Junior X30 pre-final. I wonder if we're going to get it with the Senior X30 pre-final. There's certainly a possibility of it if the drivers don't slow themselves up in time. 
But obviously there is a uh, slight delay then as we go for another formation lap. Look at how wet it is compared to what it was yesterday. It was at least cloudy yesterday with a, a few patches of sunshine. But it's definitely changed dramatically in the last 24 hours as the racing is going to be very close indeed. But can Santiago Valve maintain his position at the front of the field here from uh, Oliver Greenall and Callum Bradshaw? Pedro Hilprand, Thomas Fleming, Dervic, Shields, the Vec, Calteran, Kimber, Balota, Walker and Goldstein, Hovelak and Gonzalez, Stephen Haydens, Pataya, Lartigo, Nataril, Atkins, Moore, Porter, Westover, Peugeot, Olsen, Maton, Becerra, Antunez, the Sertua, Cunnington, way down, Babichkova, Tarman, La Cruz, Mono and van der Westerlaken. 35 drivers in the field. The absence of Clayton Ravenscroft is rather a shock. He will be back for the final from 36th on the grid. But let's see how this race gets underway. This time it's a much more controlled start from Santi Valve. Are we going to get off the grid? I think Oliver Greenall is going to get a better start. And away we go. Green lights. And it's a good start initially for Greenall, but he then gets boxed in from the drivers on the inside line. Pedro Hilbrand almost gets on the grass and manages to recover. Santi Valde trying to hold on into the first corner, but Callum Bradshaw immediately gets into the inside line and there's a spin. It is one of the AC Motorsport cards. Is that Dervich? I think it is. Clarissa Dervich. She can't believe it. Absolutely fuming. Clarissa Dervich spun around there and so too is Dan Antunez. Oh, what a heartbreaker for Clarissa Dervich. Her weekend was going superbly. And it looks as though we've lost Pesera and uh, Teresa Babichkova elsewhere. Clarissa Dervich can't believe her luck. She was up in the top 10. She had been amazing all weekend long. And now Clarissa Dervich and Dan Antunez are walking in. Clarissa Dervich cannot believe her misfortune. Here's the leader. It's the world champion, Callum Bradshaw. It's back to business, uh, just as he was at Portimao in Portugal at the end of the year last year, six months ago. And he is back where he belongs at the front of a wet race. This is an absolute squabble in Senior X30 already as Calteran drifts out wide, gets boxed in there behind the 298 of Mark Kimber, who now dives through for the inside of Fleming. Mark Kimber and Aaron Walker are getting on with this now. Here comes the move. Oh, that's Fleming. So it must be Hovelak they're battling with further back as Hovelak is trying to work his way forward through the field. No, it's Louis Westover, in fact. What a shocker there. Westover charging his way through. So we've got some retirements already from the field then. We've got uh, Dervich and uh, Antunez out of luck. Evan Becerra is down at the back of the field, I think, after an earlier incident with Teresa Babichkova. She's now down at the back end of the field. So Fleming through to second past Santi Valve. And so it's Bradshaw leading. Fleming second, Valve third. And then Hiltbrand is in fourth position now in front of Kimber and Shields. What a start from Louis Westover. He is up in seventh position. That is absolutely astonishing. In uh, just a couple of laps, he has gone from 24th on the grid to P7 halfway round lap two. So some absolutely astonishing battles so far from the field. But it's Callum Bradshaw leading, Fleming second, Valve in third, Hillbrand in fourth place from Kimber, Shields, Westover, Belota, Greenall and Walker. Henke Calteran doing a fair job in 11th position, just trying to hold on to things as Ben Hovelak is having a go at him. And that is Westover about to lose ground from Keith Shields, his teammate round the outside. Keith Shields pulls a fast one and gets through. Sam Belota is doing a great job. Let's consider the fact that he started the weekend down in 72nd in the rankings out of 79. And now he is fighting in the top 10. What a comeback from Sam Balota. Easily the star of the weekend. As a great move there from Kean Shields. He gets the run on Mark Kimber and makes the move. So Kean Shields gets through. Manages to hold his line from Mark Kimber. Watch out for Louis Westover. He's going to get a fast one on Sam Balota. Gets up alongside his teammate and gets through. So a nice bid there, and now dives on the inside of Kimber, gets out wide, Kimber gets him back, on the wet stuff, it's Westover back on the inside of Kimber, and through past both of them comes Sam Belota. Watch out for Oliver Greenall, he's there in ninth position trying to get back, oh Kimber goes straight into the back of the 232 of Louis Westover, and Westover goes off the circuit. What a shame for Kimber, I think Kimber just missed his breaking point completely, and goes into the back of Louis Westover. What a shot. And then look, Mark Kimber's definitely got an issue there with the front fairing as a result of that. That was a big hit. And now diving for the inside, Greenall squeezes his way past Kimber. The 278 in there as well. That's Aaron Walker. 
My goodness, that was a big hit on the inside there of Louis Westover from Mark Kimber. Completely unintentional. He just missed his breaking point altogether. Easy to do in the wet conditions. And Mark Kimber now chasing after the 364 of Oliver Greenall. Well, the fascinating battle continues here. It's Callum Bradshaw out in front, a second clear of Thomas Fleming, sets the fastest lap. This is the territory that Callum Bradshaw loves to be in. Out front and in control. Now we've got the run from Kimber on the inside of Greenall. It doesn't work out and Walker's gonna get past Kimber now as well. And behind them, we've got Louis Westover recovering side by side with Onzo Levesque. He gets through, Calterman trying to squeeze on the inside of Levesque as well. That's going to be a tough move to pull off because Levesque is very controlled on the inside. And he has to give best and let him go. So Anze Levesque is through past Enke Calterum. Yanis Steven Aiden's 13th in front of Hovelak, Cunnington, Le Septua, and Morgan Porter. Side by side. This is Aaron Walker making his bid to get back past Oliver Greenall. And here comes Mark Kimber making his move on the inside line. And you know what? I think Mark Kimber, looking at it again, having got past his teammate now, I think Kimber may have got away with this, you know, on the front fairing, because it was a big hit on the back of Louis Westover. I think he might have got away with it. As skating through, that's Greenall on Westover. Westover trying to come back and charge his way back forward. But Kimber and Walker having a great tussle there for seventh and eighth place. Greenall is ninth, Westover's tenth, Levesque is eleventh. Watch out for Westover, he's going beautifully quickly here. Up on the inside of Greenall. Gets the move. Levesque tried to get through on the inside as well as Kean Shields now sets the fastest lap of the race. Westover cannons across for Greenall. They both go onto the grass. And that's Greenall a long way down. Look at the mud that's been thrown onto the front fairing there of Greenall's car. That shows you how much rain has fallen over the course of the last hour. As that was bone dry earlier in the day. So Bradshaw, Fleming, Valve, Hiltbrand, Shields and Belota. That's your top six at the moment. Big lunch from the inside on Levesque. Levesque gets the move there on Yanis Steven Aidens. And here comes Oliver Greenall back for more. Trying to go around the far side. And here's Benjamin Hovelak on the inside of Steven Aidens. Greenall loses ground on traction. And Levesque and Greenall get the move on the inside. Greenall gets back through on Onzo Levesque. Onzo Levesque comes back alongside. Greenall trying to shut the door. Yanis Steven Aidens gets them both. And now Benjamin Hovelak on the inside of both of them as well. Doesn't make it through on the inside line because there's no grip on the inside line. But Yanis Steven Haydens gets past both Levesque and Greenall. Lap six. And there is Santi Balve keeping himself firmly in the top five. He needs to in these conditions because he's got a great chance, but he's been almost unbeaten all weekend. It's only the rain that's really got him unstuck. Keith Shields having a look on the inside of Pedro Hiltbrand. The flying Scotsman taking on the 2016 world champion. And there is Aaron Walker battling with his teammate Mark Kimber and his other teammate Henke Kauteren. Kauteren trying to go around the far side. Louis Westover is in the mix and he wants revenge for the earlier punt off the circuit. Whether it was intentional or not, he will still feel aggrieved by it. So there is Kimber moving across the line of Henke Kauteren and Westover is now hunting down Kimber. This is for what you did to me earlier. He slices on the inside line. Takes the place back. Nicely done from Westover. Good overtaking move there. And now justice has been served as far as Westover is concerned. I'm back in front. That'll do nicely. Thank you. So a little bit of a battle. Oh, and that's... Uh, is that Westover losing ground to Kimber again? Yes, Kimber's got him back again. So Kimber versus Westover continues. It's not done yet between these two drivers. They've raced each other time and time again, Kimber and Westover. They know each other of old, and they are great rivals on the circuit. Bradshaw still controlling the pace. Bradshaw on a Tony car in the rain. It's meant to be out front, isn't it? Valve in third place behind Thomas Fleming. Pedro Hilfrand in fourth position. Belota in fifth ahead of Keen Shields. Then we've got the battle between Walker, Calteran, Westover, Stephen Aidens, and Kimber. Kimber down to 11th now. Not sure what's happened to Mark Kimber there, but he's certainly lost a couple of places. Westover drifting out wide. That's Pedro Hilbrand running wide and at the expense of Santi Valve. The Sorcerer lets the Apprentice go by. And on the inside, Samba Lota now making his beard on Pedro Hilbrand. He gets through. Samba Lota is just doing a sensational job. And now through comes Keen Shields. So Hilbrand down from third to sixth. But Belota is the man to keep an eye on here. He's doing an absolutely exceptional job. Closing up on Santi Valve. Sam Belota is giving it absolutely everything. And he's doing such a good job. 72nd in time qualifying. And here he is in fourth position, hunting down a podium.
if Sam Belota gets to the podium here this weekend, that will be the biggest comeback since Rocky Balboa. Absolutely amazing. Sam Belota is doing an excellent job here. On the far side, back on the home straight. And Sam Belota hunting down Santivaldi. Six laps to go. A very tough race in the offing here from Sam Belota, but he's giving it everything on Santivaldi. Valve protects. He goes right, goes left. There's no way through for Belota. And Belota still trying. Callum Bradshaw bangs in another fastest lap. Thomas Fleming in second place. Here comes Belota on the inside. Squeezes Valve wide. Brilliant move from Sam Belota. No way Valve can move back to cover. Valve's frustrated, but there's nothing wrong with what Sam Belota did there. Absolutely terrific move from Sam Belota. Gave him space, didn't give him enough for a defense, but that isn't what he needs to do. He needs to get past him. Here's Keith Shields, now taking on Santivalvi as well. And the Dan Holland Racing Trio are second, third, and fourth. Amazing stuff from the boys in red, blue, and yellow. Uh, white, blue, and yellow, I should say. Excellent stuff from them. So Keith Shields now a bit of fourth position. He loves these conditions as well, sliding around in the wet. This is exactly what Keith Shields has always been very good at too. Now Pedro Hilfbrand will take on Santa Valve. The Sorcerer attacks the Apprentice again. And this is going to be a fabulous little duel between the two Spanish charges. Santa Valve, Spanish champion last season. Pedro Hilfbrand, world champion 2016. You can't really learn from better. And Hilfbrand is pushing hard here with Santa Valve in front. This is going to be an excellent run, and Hilbrand shows Santivalve nearly how it's done there on the inside. Pedro Hilbrand storming to Santivalve. He actually gestures to him, come on! You've got to move, you've got to get on with it. That's going to be an interesting uh, friction between them. Pedro Hilbrand actually set up the mole racing team that Santivalve races for there. That helped to assist it at the start of the season. So Pedro Hilbrand getting frustrated by his young protege. What are you doing, man? Get on with it. And now Hilbrand has got through. So Santivalde is struggling in the wet conditions. He doesn't have the same speed that he did in the dry. And he's really struggling to maintain his position at the front end of the field. Callum Bradshaw isn't. He is four and a half seconds clear of Thomas Fleming in second position. That is absolutely astonishing from Callum Bradshaw. Just unlocking that same mentality, that same dictatorial pace and discipline from the front of the field that he showed at Portimao six months ago in the World Championship final. So Callum Bradshaw, there he is in the lead, just where he loves to be. Fleming, Belota, Shields. The three musketeers from Dan Holland Racing have stormed their way through to second, third and fourth. Louis Westover is trying to cha uh, chase after them. D'Artagnan is coming. And they continue to battle forward. Keen Shields with a new fastest lap, 117.008. And Pedro Hilbrand having got past Santivalde, now up in the fifth position. Aaron Walker in seventh place ahead of Calteron. Westover, Kimber, Stephen Haydens, Levesque, Greenault, Lesertua, and Guy Cunnington, who has fought his way beautifully to 15th place. So the retirements, Dan Antunez, Evan Becerra, and Clarissa Dervich all out on lap one. Lucas Tyman out. Oh, Mark Kimber's got a warning flag. Mark Kimber's got a warning flag now in the IAMI Euro Series. If you get the warning flag, it comes with a five-second penalty. Now, I don't know whether that was for the incident between himself and Westover. It might have been. It might have been something else entirely. But for whatever reason, Mark Kimber has been given the warning flag, and that will come with a five-second penalty. That will currently drop him to 16th position from where he currently is in 10th. The former IAMI Euro Series title winner is really struggling today in Suera. Now, Sam Belota is still going on. Oh, Morgan Porter's picked one up as well. So a five-second penalty for Morgan Porter incoming too. Now, the three Musketeers are battling together, second, third, and fourth behind Bradshaw. But only two of them can be in the top three. And Belota senses a chance that he can get past Thomas Fleming. Sam Belota doing an amazing job here, fighting his way through. And he could get all the way to second from what was 71st in time qualifying. You'd never have put money on that, but Sam Belota is not a man to back down from a fight and a challenge. And he's giving it everything. Sam Belota all over the back of Thomas Fleming. Is he gonna get his chance? He seeks the opportunity, he seeks the move. Now, is there gonna be an opportunity here from Sam Belota? Three laps to go. Thomas Fleming is very cool in the wet. So too is Sam Belota though. Herman Coppenol watching along. Always great racing when it's raining. 
you're not wrong. Bradshaw leads by nearly six seconds to Thomas Fleming. He's just got so much speed up front. But these three are now going to get into some badinage between them. Belota seeking a chance here on Fleming. Fleming holding the inside line. Belota going right round the outside. Watch how much momentum he's going to gain off the turn. And he's going to try and make his bid. Kean Shields is in there as well. There's going to be a couple of positions fought for now between the three drivers. There's only one rule in the awning. Do not take each other out. Kean Shields is having a look at Belota. Belota is now having a look at Fleming. Belota dives for the inside line. Fleming's got to stay to the outside and commit to it now. Belota comes through, gets second place. Keen Shields cuts through for third. So they swap positions. Belota into second, but not for long. Here comes Keen Shields. And also through comes Fleming. They're racing for position now, the DHR trio. Excellent racing between them as they continue their charge forward. So Keen Shields now in second. Fleming in third, Belota in fourth. And they are seven seconds back for Bradshaw, who is just a second a lap quicker than anybody else at the moment. Excellent stuff from Belota. Dives through on Fleming, gets the job done. And now Fleming is struggling in front of Pedro Hilbrand. I wonder if he's worn out the tyres because there's not a lot of standing water left on the circuit. You can see a little bit of spray coming up. But obviously those wet tyres are going to get very hot indeed if they are not on uh, the wet part of the road. And you can see that a dry line is developing. It's not bone dry by any means, but it has ceased raining a little. It's certainly eased off. So now those wet tyres are going to be incredibly hot into the last lap. Kean Shields looks back. He's in second. Belota looks back. He's in third. Pedro Hilbrand is trying to break up the trio here. But look at Callum Bradshaw out in front. Dominant. Exceptional. This is why he was the world champion in 2020 at Portimao in the rain. When he gets a good cart underneath him, when he gets the balance right, when he's disciplined and controlled, he is unstoppable. Hiltbrand gets the run on Fleming and gets there. Pedro Hiltbrand in a fourth position. He wants to put a Spaniard on the podium and he's still pushing every bit of it. Excellent from Pedro Hiltbrand. But Callum Bradshaw is already on the other sector, heading into sector three. Seven seconds ahead of Kean Shields. What a try from Callum Bradshaw. There have been doubts about his ability over the last few weeks and months, especially after Marion Borg. I think there were a few people questioning, was he really a worthy world champion? You can't deny it anymore. He can't just do it once. He can do it multiple times. When it rains, Bradshaw is the man. Out of the final turn, Callum Bradshaw is back on top. He comes out of the final corner and Bradshaw dominates the pre-final. Excellent run from the world champion. Welcome back to the front. Excellent job from Callum Bradshaw today. There's Keir Shields and there is Sam Belota in third position. Masterful recovery from Sam Belota this weekend. Excellent work, a lot of big comebacks in this race. A lot of drivers can be very happy with what they've achieved in this pre-final. Uh, there's a handful of them who are gonna be devastated. But Callum Bradshaw does the business out in front. Excellent opening lap, excellent display. Very disciplined, very controlled, and knew what to expect from the wet. Just got the job done. Excellent from Callum Bradshaw. And he will start the final from pole position for Strawberry Racing. And it's going to be very hard for any driver to catch up with him in the form he's currently in. The only way it's going to be a bit of an upset now is if it stops raining, and they've got to make an interesting strategic decision on tyres ready for the final. But I'm not sure if it'll dry out in time for that kind of decision to be made. So for Callum Bradshaw, it's exactly how he wanted to go about it. And it's exactly the performance we expected. So Callum Bradshaw takes the victory in the pre-final. Kean Shields in second from Samba Lota and Pedro Hiltbrand. Thomas Fleming and Aaron Walker from Louis Westover and Santiago Valve. Henke Kalterin and Mark Kimber, who will take a five-second penalty and drop to 13th. Enzo Levesque, Yannis Steven Haydens and Lawrence Lesatua will overtake him. Guy Cunnington will be 14th ahead of Ben Hovelak, Oliver Greenall way down in 16th in the end from Rivaldo van der Westerlaken. And a good recovery from Matilda Olsen as well. Rivaldo van der Westerlaken up to 17th from the back. Well done to him. 19th place for Enzo Peugeot and head of Noah Maton. Morgan Porter will carry a penalty as well and drop down to 25th position. 
Herbert Moore, Ivan Bataya, Alexandra Mono, and Teresa Babichkova will overtake him. Kalai Atkins, Eloy Gonzalez, Onza de Cruz, Ellie Goldstein, Hugo Natarill, Lazar Latigo are next up. Goldstein, a disaster, down to 29th. Lucas Tarman out of the race, as too were Clarissa Dervich, Evan Becerra, and Dan Antunez before the first lap was completed. Clayton Ravenscroft didn't even make the start. So what a dramatic battle it has been, and what a fantastic race it has been as well in each of the three categories. The finals are, of course, coming up. They are not going to be far away, and it is uh, only a matter of time now before the drivers will make their way to the circuit. There's your schedule for the day. So in 24 minutes from now, the Mini X30 final will take place. We've got a bit of time uh, to we'll wait before then, so we'll show you the highlights uh, from Marienborg, uh, the uh, race that happened uh, a few weeks ago. That was the first round of the 2021 IAMI Euro Series. So we will show you the highlights uh, from round one to get you built up and ready and prepared for live action from Zuera in the Mini X30 final, junior and senior as well. And that will kick off in a little under 24 minutes from now. Hope you've got a good vantage point and hope you've got a good seat. But I promise you, you'll only need the edge of it. Welcome to the 2021 IAMI Euro Series. We start our journey at the Kalfing de Fagne circuit at Marienborg in Belgium. 1.366 kilometers of tough technical apexes, high speed straights and fast sweepers. With 37 races over three days and a total of 179 competitors from all four corners of the globe, it's the perfect time to find out who the best X30 racers of 2021 will be. So let's go. A long time on the throttle heading into turn one at Marienborg as we ride with Sam Balota on board. It's a fast but technical first corner. The marbles on the outside mean there's only one fast line through. Then a tough second corner which tightens, opens, then tightens again and leads into a prime overtaking spot into turn three. A lot of accidents happen here too as it's hard to get right. Then up to four, a square left that many choose as an overtaking spot to catch out the unprepared. You're back on the power through five and six, working hard to keep the line, fast but strong. And then a double apex right-hander, which again is a perfect overtaking spot for the last of the late breakers. The exit's important to protect too. Back through the left and into the complex affectionately known as the escargot. Right and left before a heavy braking zone for a pair of hairpins where drama and action are never far away. Once out of the right, you accelerate out as the corner opens on the run to the pit bend. Many a race is won and lost here in the closing stages. It's a key corner to excel at as the time gained past the mechanics gantry and onto the home straight can be the difference between winning and losing. race I was already in Formula One so I took it a bit late to the go-kart world <laughs> so I'm discovering lots of things you know um, that's why I, I try to to get um, a lot of information from the best experienced people around and try to surround myself with the uh, experience and good people that I can trust and that can guide me because this is really new to me when you look at the paddock I mean uh, this is sometimes better than some of the racing car paddocks you know so the level is really intense very good team very good drivers coming up. It's nice to see their evolution. As I said, I'm quite excited by the, this, whole, this whole new world for me. I like to discover and to learn about motorsport in general. So whether it's in Formula One, Junior Series or Go-Karts, I'm always trying to look at the best opportunities. I can be 
more confident now since I've seen how all the drivers drive and maybe I can get another win. It's fun because you can go fast and knowing the track from last year, going around it again, remembering. It's hard, the track changes a lot, so you just have to work with the setup. It's good because I can do data and camera after my sessions and I also have my notebook that I can write down what I need to do in the next session. Well, I just kept improving and I'm helping my teammates, they're helping me. And in the sessions we practice working together and in, when it comes up to qualifying, we do a great job. Since I do a lot of wet practice in the UK, I think I'm really confident for the wet. On one of the other days, I had a wet session and I did really well. I think top three is a good result. Hopefully win is way better though. We're underway and it's a great start for Dizzy Cushnini through to the first corner. Brilliant start in the first corner from Ben Smith. He gets into second place and there's contact. That looks like Harrison Mackey's gone around. A spin in the first corner. It's the 9.22 to go before the checkered flag. So plenty of things and action to see. And a beautiful move around the outside of the Escargo turn. This is turn number nine on the left-hander happening through the midfield. We will wait for confirmation of the gaps as they make their way into the last sector. Beautifully made from the 9.26. Max Cuthbert gets the run on Henry Domain and he's being charged down by Eluan Benyume and uh, Eluan Bienami doing a fantastic job there in seventh position. Let's see, and there comes a switch for the first position with Kuznini losing a place to Sasha van Padbosch. Oh, that's Marianito, a spin for Marianito and Jonathan Landstrom. So those two are going to be battling away. They could snag a podium here if anything happens with these three. Up the inside comes Kamyab. He storms on the inside of Kushnini. Wow. Talk about timing. I think Van Bosch has done enough here. Kamyab defends. Kushnini launches. Gets in a second on the final turn. Sasha wins it. Brilliant victory for Sasha Van Bosch. He opens his 2021 account with a glorious victory. And Van Bosch, Kuznini and Kamyab have risen to the brim like absolute phoenixes from the flames. Van Bosch is back and he's on top. Sasha Van Bosch wins it from Tiziano Kuznini and Roman Kamyab. Ben Smith in fourth, Jesse Phillips in fifth. Eluan Bianami and Zach Drummond from Henry Domain and Luna Flusha. Jason Bralich and Rodrigo Seabra ahead of Matt Corby and Harrison Mackey. Roman Kamyab, Tiziano Kishnini, and your race winner, Sasha Van Bad Bosch! So all week is good. And in, in the final, um, on the start, I start D and I go to third. And in two laps, I go to, um, and after to uh, Tiziano Kishnini. In lap three, I overtake him, I go first. And the rest of the race, I go first and I'm winning. In the first heat we make P3, second heat P4, third heat P4, and at the pre-final we start at 7th and go to 1st, and at the final we start also at 1st and we finish at 2nd. In the final we managed to get up to 3rd, to the 3rd corner, and I overtook Kuzunini and I pushed my teammate Sasha away. On the last lap, he overtook me because I didn't defend. But yeah, I'm very confident for Zuara since I've done a few laps around it on a simulator at iZone. And yeah, I'm feeling confident. quite different as the weather is very different. Uh, it's very hot in the Middle East and quite cold here in Marienburg. But I'm really enjoying the track and really enjoying the time here. The drivers are a lot more skilled and more experienced than back in the Middle East. It's a very nice circuit and I've really enjoyed learning it. We've had some good pace in practice and um, the team have helped me a lot by improving those little steps. There's a really good environment inside the tent and we learn a lot inside and outside of the tent. Qualifying has always been uh, my struggle. But in the races, I plan to move up if we get a bad quality, for example, um, and over the season, just improve out in racing in general. The first session is always the most important year, um, adapting on how the day um, and how the track 
uh, is affected from the past few days and the weather over overnight. Uh, pretty confident we've shown some good signs of rain in past European races, but we haven't had a session here in the rain just yet. The juniors will race now up to the first corner and it's a great start for Teofil now and Finn McLaughlin is trying to get a move or two on the inside line in the middle of the top six. Phil now is already starting to unleash the speed and try and get clear. It is up to Jaden Tian and the man in third position, Leo Robinson, not to let him get away. One lap completed and Teofil Nail is doing what he did for the pre-final and for the back, a switch for second position, beautifully made by Leo Robinson, the Fusion motorsport driver. Paul Carlos is trying again and this time, this time around he succeeds in his overtaking maneuver into the happen. And Paul Kaios gets the run on Leo Robinson over the second place. Finn McLaughlin hasn't read that script, he wants third position and he takes it. Bart Harrison fails to get the move on Jaden Tian. Finn McLaughlin dies for the inside of Podkaios. There's room enough for Robinson, but Podkaios chops across. And uh, we're going to keep our focus on the battle for the last two steps of the podium because Podkaios is about to lose the, the third place. Beautifully made by Leo Robinson. Ahead as well, number 23, trying to escape from that uh, very aggressive field. And watch out for Bart Harrison going through as well, Jaden Tian. Increases space. And watch out for Bart Harrison actually going round. A little bit of exit. Oh, and some trouble for the 24, I'm afraid. Yeah. Paul Chaos! There you go, in the meantime. Beautifully made by the Spaniard who is going through. Was well, that is the 143 disappearing off the road? Takes the victory for France and for 2N Racing in the Junior X30 final here at Marienburg. Finn McLaughlin second, Bart Harrison third. Out in front. He starts his season the way he needs to go on. I wonder how strong he's going to be. Teofil Nahal is the winner in front of Finn McLaughlin and Bart Harrison. Bod Chaos in front of Leo Robinson. Will McIntyre in sixth ahead of Jaden Tien and Kimi Abraham. Vinny Phillips and Clement Utran round out the top ten. Them off the road, that is the two trash. trash. <laughs> Times racing cards. I think that's Rivaldo van der Westerlaken. Outside and there's a crash. That's Matilda Olsen. Oh, Matilda Olsen goes off on the grass. So a great battle, here comes the Vec on the inside, tucks in in front of Walker and gets second position. Look at him, been taking a sandwich but not for long as he takes first position in lap number two on the open. Westover gets the move on Kimber and that's a crash, unfortunately we've got two of them off the road. That is the 220 of Teresa Babichkova and Lewis Mackey. Bart Pluke is going to try and make the bid on Kimber with some support from Sean Butcher. They both strike through because Pluke runs wide. Butcher gets both of them and that puts him up into fifth position. As Enzo Levesque is still leading away for two tenths of a second faster. And get if he made the 283. Run the inside. This is Dan Stinman. Run the inside of Mark Kimber, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. In turn number two. Mark Kimber all the way down in ninth. Here comes Pluk up the inside of Westover. Nicely done. Fifth position for the young Dutchman. Santiago Valves, I think the fastest lap. Well, Westover fighting back. And watch out for the back because we had Dan Stinman as well. And one of the Vidika drivers, unfortunately, another one having to retire. There was not any gold strain in this one that you identified in Jake. It's Lawrence the Sertua. Yet again, another Belgian superstar falls by the wayside as they succumb to the pressure and the might and the anguish. Kimber, Steenman, Bluth, Pattaya, and there goes the move on the inside from Greenall. He gets up into fifth position. Don't forget, this is his first weekend as a senior as well as Aaron Walker. Run the inside. No, that's Sean Pacho who does it, and he takes it with him. Then two positions lost by uh, Callum Bradshaw, I'm afraid, from third to fifth in just one corner. So once again, the worst possible case scenario. And there goes oh! another move. Beautifully made in the Escargo, but Oliver Greenwald going up to third position. He definitely didn't see that one coming. Now Bradshaw storms up the inside of Butcher. He really has paid up and pay attention. Here's Kimber, gets the move, and so does Westover on Sean Butcher. He's got to try and do all that hard work again, so he gets on with it. As Westover gets Kimber, so does Butcher. And there goes a switch in the different position. Mark Kimber driving through, and watch out for Dan Stinman because we had forgotten. And there's another switch, and Butcher taking the pace back. This is even Batale as well. Those two might want to get involved, and Dan Stinman goes through as well. Sean Butcher losing positions outside of the hairpin. Oh, unfortunately, one of the drivers indeed. Uh, Santi Valve. Yeah, Santi Valve. As we're going to see Dan Stinman oh! driving around the inside. Oh, that was close, but he actually didn't make that stick. 
on Kimber. Kimber fighting for position. He's actually busy all over the place because Dan Stillman as well as the others. That's Maximus Meyer! Yeah, where, where did he come from actually? Maximus Meyer, we didn't see that coming in ninth place. He'll launch on the inside and he takes the lead! As these two continue to squabble, Green or absolutely resolute oh. to get past Westover, forces the issue. Butcher comes around the outside, grabs fifth position away from Westover. Levesque is trying every trick in the book. He squeezes. Walker will not let him have it. He squeezes back into the lead. He's going to get assistance. Oh, he swims on the inside of Levesque. Turn three. Back on the power. Oh, he's let Bradshaw go on the far side. Walker has opened the door by accident. Bradshaw swims through. Levesque gets there as well. Bradshaw snatches the lead on the final lap. Here comes Levesque. He gets back through. Walker gets alongside his teammate. Levesque is in the lead. This is going to go right down to the wire. Bradshaw tries again. Levesque holds it. Bradshaw absolutely determined. They come together. Levesque and Bradshaw are put over the top. Aaron Walker gets a reprieve. Aaron Walker's going to take the victory after all. Levesque and Bradshaw lick their wounds for second and third. But Aaron Walker wins at Marienburg. And in the Mini X30 in particular, it's all change. It's been Sandra Perez from pole position originally. Now it is all about Roman Kambiab. In the wet conditions, he's the one with all the aces. Let's go down to the grid and have a look at the drivers who will be on the racetrack. So the competitors are ready for action here at Circuito Internacional Zuera. It's going to be a very tough race indeed. Roman Kamyab will start from pole position after his electrifying drive in the wet in the pre-final. Great to see him back up at the sharp end once more. And if it continues to be wet, it's going to be hard for anybody to catch him. Second position for Raul Thuntharden, who has done a terrific job to get himself up into second position. The Spanish talent doing a great job into B2. Third position for Ben Smith. What a recovery drive it's been for him this weekend. The young British driver for Fusion Motorsport now on the inside of the second row of the grid. Third position uh, and fourth position is the Dutchman Sasha van Padbosch. A great recovery from the man who won at Marienborg, of course, a few weeks ago and led the championship coming into this weekend. He still leads it with five points advantage, but it's a very tough race ahead of them in the final. Anything can happen. 9.27 is in P5. That is Harrison Mackey from Great Britain. He will be there in fifth position on the starting grid. And alongside him on the grid will be the Dutch youngster, Luke Tal. Very impressive indeed over the course of this weekend. And straight up to the sharp end in fine fashion. Seventh position on the grid will be the Spanish sensation for MDC Racing in the CRG, Sandro Perez Sanchez. He will be in the fourth row of the grid on the inside line. And on the outside line, it'll be the British star Jesse Phillips leading the charge for Oliver Rowland Motorsport on the eighth position slot of the grid. Ninth place on the starting grid will be Luna Flusha as she continues to fly the flag for Spain within the Fusion Motorsport awning. Doing a fantastic job so far this weekend. Just a slight error in the pre-final, but she's still in for the fight for the victory. And in 10th position, what a recovery drive and a great comeback to the front for Rodrigo Seabra. They call him the Racing Wolf. And there's plenty of reasons to get excited about this night owl as he charges his way forward in P10. 11th on the starting grid, it is Hugo Marti for Paralin Espana. And he will be there on the inside of row six. Beside him is Danny Babacek, the sensational privateer in the Paralin. What a great job he has done so far this weekend. 13th position for Bosco Arias in 935, the AC motorsport cart, as he puts himself into a solid position, 13th on the grid. Eloan Bianami will be there in the grid as well in the 965. A great job for JHM, and he puts himself into 14th place. Dan Sofronea for the Oliver Rowland motorsport team. He is 15th on the starting grid, fighting his way through with great commitment. Jensen Graham will be alongside him on the starting grid. The young Scottish charge doing a sensational job to be P16 on the starting grid for this one. Halfway there, plenty of stuff for him still to do. 
Mick Blankenspoor will be in the VK Racing Machine, 17th on the starting grid, the young Dutchman. And he will be lining up alongside the Frenchman for top chrono competition. And that is Victor Galmiche, who will be there in 18th position on the starting grid. Good to see him as he charges his way through to the front. 19th on the grid will be Thomas Pradier as he runs in 19th on the grid for PB Cart. 20th on the starting grid will be the Spanish sensation for Monlau Competition. Youssef Martin will be there in P20 on the starting grid. 21st will be the Praga racing youngster, Alejandro Martinez. And he will be there in P21 on the starting grid on the inside of row 11. Beside him will be the Frenchman, Oscar Gusho of the Victory Lane karting team. He'll be there in P22 of the starting grid. 23rd on the grid, it is the Frenchman, Sasha Avril, who's been very strong indeed over the weekend. Great to see him doing a great job, and he is there 23rd on the grid for this one. 24th, a fantastic recovery so far from Cut Republic Espana's Javier Broasca, as he runs in P24 on the grid, having fought his way through from the pre-final and from the second chance heat before that. A great work from Javier Broasca to make progress. The PDB Racing Team has their young gun in 25th on the starting grid. Jason Bralich will be there in 25th on the starting grid on the inside of row 13. And what a sensational job he could do today. P26 on the grid. It is the Swedish talent Jonathan Landstrom who has fought his way back from the second chance heat to get himself into a competitive position once again here in P26 in the energy course. 27th on the grid, it is the WJS racing cart, Roberto Bass, in the 916. He will be there in position, fighting his corner to get up the order. And Roberto Bass will be alongside the Swiss ace for the Spirit Racing team. And it is the very talented youngster, Matt Corby, who will be 28th on the starting grid. A difficult pre-final for him, but he's still got plenty of race action to come. 29th on the starting grid for the TD Kart squad, it is Alvaro Jimenez, who will be there in P29 on the starting grid. Alongside him, for the French team kart management, will be Roman Kinsinger, and he'll be there in P30 on the grid. P31, a difficult weekend at the office so far, but he's got great chances to come back. Elio Gilter will be P31 on the starting grid. 32 on the grid is going to be a very exciting run uh, from the driver alongside him on the starting grid. And that, of course, is Quinton van Leuven, the PDB Racing Team driver from the Netherlands, who will run in 32nd on the grid. 33rd on the grid is going to be Connor Clancy from the United Arab Emirates for George Gibbons Motorsport. He will be there in 33rd on the starting grid on the inside line. And then it will be Noah Baglin, who runs from 34th on the starting grid for Oliver Rowland Motorsport. He will be there from row 17 on the starting grid. On the final row of the grid from Lebanon, based in the United Arab Emirates these days, though, it is George Nassar who will run from 35th on the starting grid uh, for the George Gibbons Motorsport team. And on the back of the starting grid, after a tough day at the office so far, but great to see him back in from the second chance heat, Senna Mounier will run from 36th on the grid as he launches his way forward. And who knows where he'll finish in today's final. There is the circuit on your screen, 1.699 kilometers in length, 9 degrees Celsius. It's not warm at all today compared to what we've seen in previous days. And the Zwerda International Circuit has definitely thrown up a bit of a surprise here with the very wet and very sodden conditions heading into this incredible race. From the pre-final, we obviously saw Roman Kamyab take the victory and bring the gap down in the title fight to just five points behind Sasha Van Padbosch. Let's not forget, of course, that drivers have to uh, count three of their best scores in both the pre-final and final. They drop their worst pre-final and their worst final result over the course of the season. So it's still very early days in the championship fight. The one man missing, of course, from the fray is the Swiss driver Tiziano Cugnini, who sadly was excluded from yesterday's running for correcting the position of his front fairing. He was running second in the title fight coming into this one. He will be back, we're sure, at Siete Larghi in uh, Castelletto de Branduzzo at the end of July. And we hope that he will still be there fighting for the victory as always. But the one-minute board is up in the air as the drivers are getting themselves ready for the final flourish. And Roman Kamiab from pole position, so strong at the Ayami Winter Cup in Valencia in similar conditions to this. No pressure, but he's definitely looking the most confident out there on the starting grid as the drivers get him into position, uh, ready for the action. But there are so many racers that could battle for the win in this one. So many things could happen. And the 36 drivers know exactly how tough the mission is going to be from here. There's so much on their expectation, so much weight on their young shoulders.
But these guys know how to get the job done in fantastic fashion. So with 36 drivers on the grid, ready to go out into unknown territory in these wet conditions, it's definitely going to be a tough race. 11 laps of the Circuito Internacional Zuera, the longest race of the weekend for them. And this is the toughest, the final. No second chances, no last gasp effort. It's all or nothing. So the X30 Minis get themselves off onto the grid and here they come. It is Roman Kamyab and Ralph and Tharen from Ben Smith and Sasha Van Per Bosch. Harrison Mackey and Luke Tal from Sandro Perez and Jesse Phillips. Luna Flusha and Rodrigo Seabra from Hugo Marti and Danny Babacek. Bosco Arias and Eluan Bianami. Dan Sofronea and Jensen Graham from Mick Blankespoor and Victor Galmiche. Thomas Pradier and Yusef Martin. Alejandro Martinez and Oscar Gucho from Sasha Avril and Javier Broasca. Jason Branich and Jonathan Landstrom. Roberto Bas and Matt Corby. Alvaro Jimenez and Roman Kinsinger from Elio Gilte and Quinton van Leuven, Connor Clancy, Noah Baglin, Georges Nassar and Senna Munier. 36 carts and they will battle for 11 of the toughest laps they could ever face around this sweater circuit in very, very wet conditions. Not going to be easy and it's all going to be down to the youngsters out there on the grid to make these advantages they have count. The final race of the weekend and this is where we'll crown an X30 mini, uh, X30 mini winner at Zwerda, the second round of the championship. Last time out, it was the very talented Dutchman Sasha van Pad Bosch who took the victory in front of Tiziano Cusnini and Ben Smith. There's going to be at least one new face on the podium this time for the 2021 season with the absence of Tiziano Cusnini. But who is going to be on the top step? It's hard to begrudge Roman Kamyab after his performance in the pre-final, but that was the pre-final. Things have changed since then. It's got a little bit wetter since then as well, so it could be even tougher to hold that pace from the off. And some of the other drivers may well have learnt from the setup tweaks that they will have made between races as well. So there could be quite the contest for the victory in this one. And the pre-final only gives us a hint at what we can expect to see from the final. It won't be a guarantee. You've still got to do the job, you've still got to win the race, and you've still got to take on the battles that come with it. It's going to be a very, very difficult race for anyone to win. So the battles are very much ominous and uh, on, the, uh, on the horizon, the competitors are going to be working incredibly hard to get themselves up to a strong position. But Roman Kamyab, Raul Thantharen, Ben Smith and Sasha Van Pad Bosch will have a very exciting run from the start, that is for sure. And then we'll have Harrison Mackey from Luke Tal, Sandro Perez and Jesse Phillips, then Luna Flusha, Rodrigo Seabra, Marty Babacek, Arias Bianami, Sofronea, Graham, Blankaspor and Galmiche. From Pradier, Martin, Martinez and Gusho, Avril, Broaska, Bralic, Landstrom, Bas, Corby, Jimenez, Kinsinger, Gilter, Van Leuven, Clancy, Baglin, Nassar and Munier. 11 laps. 11 degrees Celsius air temperature now in the wet conditions. This is all going to be about the start. Is this going to be a good one? I'm not so sure because Roman Kamyab has got away very quickly out of the final turn. But is it going to be a good start? No, it's not. I did think it was going to be around again. A bit of a rapid getaway from Roman Kamyab out of the final turn. Just a little bit of nerves creeping in there. They've got to balance when they get started. They cannot afford to launch too soon. Otherwise, it will break up the flow of the grid. And on that occasion, the clerk of the course, Martin, being very well aware that he was a little too fast coming out of the final turn. So uh, obviously they need to reset the grid and try again. Roman Kambiav just needing to control the pace a little bit more uh, fluidly from the final turn. He needs to be a little bit later on the gas because it was a little bit too early coming off the final corner. And you need to make sure obviously that it's a fair and even start uh, for all of the competitors in the field. Not easy, of course, for these youngsters in the wet conditions, but also the nerves and anticipation of getting to that first corner first sometimes overtakes the control and discipline of the mentality of these youngsters. They've got to balance it carefully. So now the drivers getting themselves back into their original grid positions. Roman Kamyab and Raul Thantharen will be at the front end of the field. Ben Smith and Sasha Van Pad Bosch. Harrison Mackey and Luke Tal, Sandra Perez and Jesse Phillips, Luna Flusha and Rodrigo Seabra. With just outside the top 10, Hugo Marti and Jenik Babacek from Bosco Arias and Eloan Bianami. What a battle it's going to be. And some great racers towards the front end of the field. Any one of them could be on the podium. 
And the handful of them are going to be able to fight for victory. They come off the final turn. This is looking better. They come through off the final corner. Is this going to be a good start? Let's race at Zuera. Brilliant start from Roman Kamiak from pole position. Through and behind Ben Smith and Harrison Mackey to the first corner. Big spray coming off the carts in turn one. But it looks good to me for Roman Kamiak as he holds the lead early doors. As round the outside. What a start from Luna Flusha. She's up into fourth position already. Cracking getaway. There she now launches in behind her three teammates. And round the outside, that's Hugo Marty having got a great start too. Ben Smith already attacking Roman Kamiab as they come through the hairpin for the first time. Two or three carts spinning around in the hairpin. And it looks as though we've got a few drivers down at the back of the field already. Yusef Martin, Oscar Gusho, and Jason Bralich all down at the back spinning, but they managed to recover. So what a terrific start from Roman Kamyab in front of Ben Smith. Third position, that's the 927. That's Harrison Mackey in front of Luna Flusha. And in the much wetter conditions than we had in the pre-final, drivers are starting to settle into a good rhythm. So this could be pretty tasty as a race. Roman kamyab has got pressure from Ben Smith nice and early on. Ben Smith is giving him everything he's got. These were the drivers that fought for third position last time out at Marienborg, and now they're fighting for the win as the first two drivers on the podium are nowhere to be seen in the top five. Good move there from Hugo Marti to get through on the inside of Luna Flusha. And here comes Rodrigo Sayabra. Sayabra is making a bid for it in P6 on the first lap. Good start from the Portuguese star. And now they come down the main straight. It's going to be an epic race from here. Here's the battle from Harrison Mackey. Makes the bid on Ben Smith, making a big push for it as he tries to work his way forward. An excellent run and a terrific charge forward from the drivers. Hugo Marti still battling with Luna Flusha and Rodrigo Seabra as they come off the final couple of corners in the first sector into the hairpin. And Kamyab doing well up in front of Smith and Mackey. Then it is Marti, Flusha, Seabra, Van Padbosch, Arias, Babicek and Luke Tal in the top 10. At least he was. Ralph and Tharden is now back up into 10th position having got past Luke Tal. Sandro Perez struggling in 12th position at the moment, trying to work his way back through the field. A couple of drivers trying to fight their way back into contention. I think I just saw the 926, Jesse Phillips, who got caught up in that first lap melee, trying to work his way back into contention. Unfortunate there for Jesse Phillips, struggling down to 22nd. A few drivers got caught up in that one early, do early doors. And so they've had to make uh, some big recoveries. Dan Sofrenea got caught out in it as well, I do believe. So uh, both of the Earl of Verona Motorsport drivers struggling to get back in contention. Up the inside, this is Hugo Marti threatening Harrison Mackey. Trying to get through into third position. Not so easy to make the conventional overtaking move in these conditions. And as you can see, Roman Kamyab is not dominating in quite the fashion he did in the pre-final. Ben Smith is doing his best to keep him honest as they run through the first corner. And it's going to be Luna Flusha hunting down Hugo Marti with Rodrigo Siabra giving good chase behind. Up to turn two. Quick flick through the right-hander, keeping the cart nice and balanced. But it is about trying to find the opportunities. Luna Flusha having a look for the inside of Hugo Marti. It's going to be a too late a bid to get through on the inside there. And that's a very controlled run behind them as we've got uh, Rodrigo Siabra being caught by Sacha Van Bosch and Bosco Arias. Yellow flags in the hairpin. Someone's gone off behind them. So we've had an off in the hairpin, and I think it's Eloan Pianame. Eloan Pianame, the Frenchman, has gone off. That is such a disappointment for Eloan Pianame. What a shame. And uh, that has dropped him down the order. He has now recovered, I should point out. But he has definitely lost a huge chunk of places as Eloan Pianame uh, rejoins down at the back of the field, I think. Well, Connor Clancy is still going, but uh, having difficulties of his own. And so the race continues on around the outside. That is Harrison Mackey still keeping on to his position as Hugo Marti steps up the attack. And Hugo Marti is just not quite able to make that move for third position. That tightens things up for Flusha and Siabra behind as they try and make their bid to get into the top five. You've got to be careful. You can't just go gung-ho and hope the overtaking move's going to stick. You need to build up to it. Kamyab, Smith, Harrison. So Roman Kamyab ahead of Ben Smith and Harrison Mackey. The field working well as they go through turn one. There's Jesse Phillips and Dan Sofrenea just trying to make their way back through the field as well after their earlier spin into the uh, midfield. Nice dive on the inside there. That's Yusef Martin getting himself back up the order. And he's battling away there with Oscar Gouchot, I do believe, the 965 in there as well. Eloan Pianami and Quinton van Leuven is in the mix there as well, the 975. Uh, the 975 in there, I do believe. Sorry, that is uh, Alvaro, uh, That is Oscar Gusho. I do apologise. Luna Flusha has made the move there on Hugo Marti. 
So Luna Flusha has got through into fourth position. Excellent run from Luna Flusha. She's now in P4 ahead of Hugo Marti with Luna Flusha now ahead of Hugo Marti and Rodrigo Siabra. She can make the bid to close up on Harrison Mackey on lap four here. This is going to be an interesting run as they continue to charge forward as into the pit lane to retire comes Connor Clancy. What a shame for the young man from the United Arab Emirates. He's pulled into the pit lane and that is his chance in the lead now gone. Sandro Perez really struggling. He's down to 15th place behind Victor Galmiche and Sasha Avril, two drivers who are really uh, loving the conditions here in the wet. So a very difficult condition for the drivers. Connor Glancy gets out of the car as the leaders come through. Now, Harrison Mackey has caught up to Ben Smith. He can now work with his teammate to go after Roman Kamyab. This is not going to be a dominant race for Kamyab at all. Ben Smith's making his bid on the inside. And Ben Smith takes the lead in the final. Runs out wide. Kamyab gets him back again. Harrison Mackey getting in there as well now. Mackey for the inside line for second. And now we're going to get an absolute rout as Rodrigo Sayabra gets into fifth position. Makes the move on Hugo Marti. And now he's P5. Here comes Ben Smith. Having a look again at Harrison Mackey on the inside. Side by side. Lucia holds it round the outside as well. And keeps the position. Fourth place. Rodrigo Siabra trying to close in on them as well. Excellent racecraft from the four drivers up front in the fusion awning. But it's not done yet. Ben Smith gestures to Luda Flusha. Come on, let's get back after Harrison Mackey. We don't want to lose this lead to Roman Kamyab. We want to catch up to him. They may be in the same morning, but there are no team orders. There's no love lost between these drivers. Ben Smith back on the inside of Harrison Mackey, trying to get through. Ben Smith commits to it. Harrison Mackey holds it, and Ben Smith gets the place. Excellent run from Ben Smith. Back into fifth position comes Hugo Marti. He's made the move back on Rodrigo Seabra. So Seabra's still there in the top six, but now under pressure as Marti gets back through. Onto the main straight. Kamyab looks back. Ben Smith. Focusing on Harrison Mackey. Come on, we can get through. We need to get past the guy in front. We need to work together. So Luna Flusha working with Marty and Siabra. Here comes Hugo Marty on the inside of Flusha. And Siabra goes to the inside line as well. But Flusha hangs on in fifth position. Marty is through to fourth. Flusha comes back to the inside. Siabra teams up. Goes past both of them in one fell swoop. Rodrigo Siabra gets them both. But on the exit, gets absolutely sideswiped by them. Marty and Flusha come back. Amazing racecraft. And Rodrigo Siabra up for the scrap as he goes for the move in fourth position. Has to get back in sixth place. But now he's getting his elbows out. Now he's going for it. Luna Flusha hunting down Hugo Marty. Can she make the move now into fourth position? Siabra still right there in sixth position. Great to see him getting his sleeves rolled up and going for the moves. Meanwhile, up in front, you can see that Smith and Mackey are getting close to Roman Kamyab once again. Anybody can still win this one. Lap six out of 11, and there's a long way still to go. Luna Flusha pushing hard on the back of Hugo Marti. Rodrigo Siabra, Sasha Van Bosch and Bosco Arriesa not far away. Harrison Mackey in behind Ben Smith. They're going to gain a massive momentum in the toe here on Roman Kamyab, and Kamyab knows it. By the time they get to turn two, there's a good chance they'll be on the tail once more. Here we go. Mackie and Smith raining down on Roman Kamyab, and Kamyab knows it. He moves across the cover. Ben Smith is now giving Roman Kamyab plenty to think about. The battle is on. Kamyab in front of Smith. Here we go. Smith on the inside makes the move. And Ben Smith takes the lead at turn four. And here comes Harrison Mackey. He gets through as well. So Smith and Mackey together. But here comes Kamyab. He's going to get back on the inside of Mackey. Mackey holds it round the outside. Kamyab goes the long way round two. And Siabra back in the fifth position. He's made the move on Luna Flusha up into P5 behind Hugo Marti. So Ben Smith is now the race leader. Kamyab second from Mackey, Marty, and Siabra. Down in the braking zone. Little bit of a nudge into the hairpin. That's okay. Everybody gets through. So Marty, Siabra, and Flusha. Now on the inside comes Sasha Van Bad Bosch, I think, to try and get through. No, that's Bosco Arias. Bosco Arias makes the move into sixth position past Flusha as Smith fends off from Kamyab in the lead. Ben Smith still holding the pace here in front of Roman Kamyab. Kamyab is looking for another way through. 
Look for Hugo Marti. He's got very close indeed to Harrison Mackey. And now they're going to be charging forward. Rodrigo Siabra fifth. Sixth position now, Bosco Arias from Luna Flusha and Sasha Van Per Bosch. Here goes Kamyab on the inside of Ben Smith. Retakes the lead, but Ben Smith's going to try and get the switch back immediately. Harrison Mackey coming for it. Here comes Hugo Marti. Now we're getting the race battle we wanted. Marti up the inside to third, to second. Gets through into Ben Smith. And up to second comes Hugo Marti. Brilliant from Marti. Now he's there in B2. And a nice move on the inside from Mackey. Ben Smith slingshots, but they get him on the exit. On the exit, Marty and Mackey are through. And now Rodrigo Siabra getting through into fourth position. Great run from the Portuguese. So Camia back in the lead of the race. And now we've got Harrison Mackey in second position in front of Hugo Marti and Rodrigo Seabra. Fifth is Ben Smith from Luna Flusha. Bosco Arias and Sasha Van Per Bosch. Here comes Smith and Flusha on the inside of Seabra. There's not a lot of room to play with. They just about keep it on the road. And Bosco Arias gets through past Seabra as well. So Seabra back down to seventh for the moment. But there's still plenty of time to play with. Don't lose heart. Here comes Marti on the inside of Mackey. Into P2 again comes the Paralin. But he loses it on the exit. Mackey gets back through on the inside. Back into the position. So Mackey into B2 on Hugo Marti. So Kamyab, Mackey, Marti and Ben Smith. Then it's Flusha, Arias, Seabra and Van Bosch. What a battle. And if it stays like this, we're going to see Roman Kamyab take the lead of the championship. Five points ahead of Sasha Van Bosch. Luna Flusha ready to work with Ben Smith. They're going to work together to catch the leading trio. Harrison Mackey very close in behind Roman Kamyab again, thanks to the support from Hugo Marti. Is there going to be a move for the lead? Three laps to go, and it's going to get very interesting from here. Wet races in the Mini X30, always full of drama and suspense, and today is no exception. Ralph and Tharden sets the fastest lap of the race, way down out of the top 20, uh, way down out of the top 10, I should say, in 16th position, Ralph and Tharden. Ben Smith and Luna Flusha still trying to make a race of this. Rodriguez Seabra fighting back. He's now into B6 again. Ben Smith getting Luna Flusha's support to try and catch the leading trio. Rodrigo Seabra getting support from Bosco Arias and Sasha Van Per Bosch. The top eight carts still very close together and still with a great chance of victory. Any one of them. Marty on the inside of Mackey. This time he gets in a second again, but Mackey retaliates in exactly the same place. So Harrison Mackey repeats the move. Marty still there in third. But Smith, Flusha and Siabra are getting very racy behind them as well. Marty needs to work with Mackey. They need to get this move done nice and early on Roman Kamyab. Down the main straight. And Kamyab's trying to break the toe. He knows that there's going to be big pressure on him into turn two. Mackey's going to be right on him. Trying to break the toe again. Kamyab goes defensive. Marty on the far side. Mackey to the inside line. Watch out for them all as they skate wide. Three wide on the exit. Marty into second. Past Harrison Mackey. Here comes Ben Smith. Ben Smith making a move. Sideways. Ben Smith is in the lead. How did he do that? Now here comes Flusha on the far side beside Kamyab. Luna Flusha takes the lead. And here come Bosco Arias and Rodrigo Siabra. They're coming through to the inside line. Luna Flusha takes the lead. Eight of them dicing for the victory. What a race this is. A lap and a half to go. Luna Flusha now leading from Roman Kamyab. She's got a chance to win it for Spain in the far side. Oh, two of them have gone off. Yellow flags. Who's it that's gone? It's Siabra, Marty and Ben Smith. Ben Smith is trying to rejoin halfway round the racetrack. I think, Ben, you've got to admit it's over now. What a shame for Ben Smith. He's, he's missing off the circuit, trying to rejoin at the final bend. I don't think that's going to work. Ben Smith rejoins. He's technically going to be first across the line, but there's no way he's going to be allowed to keep it. So Luna Flusha leads. Roman Kamyab technically in second place. Here comes Kamyab making the bid on the inside of Flusha. And here comes Bosco Arias. Bosco Arias has come into this as a late runner. Here comes the chance to come through. Bosco Arias tangles with Kamyab. Flusha on the inside. Kamyab comes back into the battle. So Roman Kamyab hanging on to this. Bosco Arias slides on the inside. Kamyab on the undercut. Flusha on the undercut as well with Harrison Mackey. Mackey's going to stall by. 
So now it's Kamyab versus Flusha, potentially for the victory. Ben Smith is technically leading, but I can't see how he's going to be able to keep the place. In fact, he's being given the blue flag. So he's being told to get out of the way. Now, can Roman Kamyab hold this on the final lap from Luna Flusha? It's got to be very sensible if you're going to have this final lap battle. What a way to fight for this. Roman Kamyab trying to hang on in front of Luna Flusha and Harrison Mackey. Bosco Arias is not far away. This is going to be one heck of a podium. Whichever driver gets into the top of it, Roman Kamyab hanging on in front of Luna Flusha. I don't think there's going to be another attempt from Flusha because she's too far back. But what a race this has been. Roman Kamyab is going to come out of the final turn in one of the toughest races he's ever going to win. It'll be Ben Smith at the flag, but he's getting another lap. Roman Kamyab wins it from Luna Flusha and Harrison Mackey. Roman Kamyab victorious again. And he takes the lead of the title fight by two points with that victory. Luna Flusha moves up to third in the standings with the highest finish she's ever had in the IAMI Euro Series. Second place, what a drive. And Harrison Mackey in third position, just 15 thousandths of a second ahead of Bosco Arias. What a race, what a duel. X30 Mini, you have delivered again. And Roman Kamyab takes the lead of the title fight in IAMI Euro Series 2021 in Mini X30. And what sportsmanship between the two drivers, Roman Kamyab and Luna Flusha. They shake on a fair fight. It was absolutely brilliant. Roman Kamyab can celebrate in style. It may not have been as easy as the pre-final, but when Roman Kamyab gets a wet track, you can expect his best. A very happy young man, Roman Kamyab. What a drive. What a race win. And that's definitely going to give him a huge smile heading to Castelletto. Roman Kamyab takes the victory in front of Luna Flusha and Harrison Mackey. Bosco Arias in fourth ahead of Sasha Van Padbosch. Alejandro Martinez ahead of Gianni Babacek from Luke Tal, Javier Broaska and Raul Fantharen in the top ten. Sasha Avril and Jensen Graham ahead of Rodrigo Seabra, who fought back valiantly ahead of Victor Galmiche and Hugo Marti. Jesse Phillips in a tough 16th ahead of Thomas Pradier and Dan Sofronea. 19th position for Yusef Martin from Sandro Perez and Matt Corby. Mick Blankaspor and Oscar Gouchot. Then Eluan Bianami and Alvaro Jimenez from Roberto Bas and Elio Gilter. Jonathan Landstrom, Jason Bralich, Quinton Van Leuven and George Nassar from Roman Kinsinger and Noah Baglin. A lap down, rather sadly, Ben Smith in the end of it all. And then Connor Clancy out of the race, as too was Senna Munier after an off at the final lap. On the first lap, I do apologize. So big moments there in the race, but it's a brilliant podium. Roman Kamyab, Luna Flusha and Harrison Mackey. What a terrific race it was for them here at Zwerda. And as you can see, the Junior X30 drivers are getting ready for their ultimate battle, which will be coming up in a few short minutes. But what a race it was in Mini X30. Absolutely sensational dueling. And they really gave us an absolutely magnificent show. The drivers are heading out onto the circuit any moment now to prepare for the presentation for the Junior X30 drivers on the final grid.
an exciting 20x30 final that was. Absolutely non-stop battles all the way through. Uh, exceptional performance. An exciting bit of race action to come as the drivers are preparing for more exciting race action around the Zueta circuit for the Junior X30 final. Canato Lee will take up residency in pole position after a stunning drive in the pre-final. Great to see the Japanese driver on the front of the starting grid. Racing, of course, under a British license. So it'll be the British, uh, British anthem that we hear if he were to take the victory. But Canato Lee... Will be there on the top of the podium if he continues this brilliant form for the Strawberry Racing team. The man alongside him would love to deny him, though. Vinny Phillips in second position on the starting grid, having fought for pole position in the pre-final over the course of the heats yesterday and doing a fantastic job to get himself there. So third position on the starting grid is Bart Harrison, having fought his way through to third position after a brilliant drive in the pre-final. Great to see him up at the sharp end and looking to get himself back into contention in the driver's title fight in third place on the grid. Fourth place is Ivan Arias. A great drive so far from him this weekend for the AC Motorsports squad. Good to see him there in P4. He's done an exceptional job up to this point and he just needs to keep it lit and keep pushing. Fifth position on the grid, the Frenchman Théophile Nile has been so impressive over the course of the weekend, as he was, of course, last time out at Marienburg as well. And great to see him doing an absolutely sensational job for all of the competition. 
And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more to come uh, from him over the course of this final. 33 is next up. That is Paul Chaos, uh, sixth position for FA Racing Espana. And he has fought himself back into contention very nicely in this last race of the day. Thomas Strauman in seventh position. A good fight from him in the first race. Could have been as high as third at one point. But Thomas Stralvan has got plenty of work still to do. And one of the youngest members of the Strawberry Racing team definitely doing an absolutely fantastic run. The eighth position card, the number 49, that is Adrian Maliero. He is there in eighth position on the starting grid. And he will be there on the outside of row four. Ninth on the grid, it is the 80. That is Zachary David from the Philippines. He will put himself into a very strong position for the Monlao Competition squad. Don't forget, this is his first time in the AMI Euro Series. And he is there in P9 on the grid on his debut in the final. Alongside him on the grid, the 84 of Brandon Carr. He will be there in position uh, P10 on the starting grid, ready for more action and banter. It's an all-spirit racing row six. 24 and 28 are together on the starting grid. Gaspard Lagaye on the inside line. Kevin Rabin on the outside line. The Swiss drivers doing a fantastic job in the wet in the pre-final. And they find themselves together on 11th and 12th on the grid with a great chance of a decent top 10 result. 13th on the grid, one of the stars of the pre-final in the number 81 for the Victory Lane Karting Squad. The Portuguese talent Noah Monteiro doing a sensational job in the pre-final to fight his way up towards the lower end of the top 10. And there could be a heck of a lot more to come from him in this final. Alongside him on the grid, the 25, uh, another Swiss driver, Ethan Ischer for the Spirit Racing Team. He will be there on the outside of the seventh row of the grid. 15th on the grid, it is the second of the Victory Lane karting carts up at the front end. 62, Kimi Duron, who has been very talented indeed over the weekend and gets himself into a fine position through a little bit of splishing and splashing over at the pre-final. Alongside him on the grid, Arthur Poulain in the number 20 for the PB Kart squad. A good result for him thus far, and he continues to put in an excellent display. It's an all-Spanish row nine in the 32 for the MDC racing team on the CRG. It is Juan Aluja who will be there on the inside of the grid. And on the outside of the grid, another Spanish talent, the number 51, Denis Curivali of the Kart Republic Espana squad. He will be there in 18th sorry, position of the starting grid. Next up in 19th place is the 46. He will be there in position. That is Miquel Marino of the DG Motorsport squad. He lines up 19th on the starting grid in the blue, yellow, and white machine. And alongside him is the 143, that is the WJS racing driver, Sam Van Voskulen. What a fight back it's been for him so far. Great to see him now towards the mid of the pack. And there's plenty for him to achieve in this one. 21st on the grid is Thibaut Ramakers, the Belgian for the Eurokarting squad in the number 119. He will be there next up in the 11th row of the starting grid. And beside him will be the number 93, a great debut in the IAMI Euro Series for Matteo Quintarelli of the George Gibbons Motorsport team. Next up in the grid, in the number 56, it is Aaron Ferrazzano. He will be there on the inside line of row 12. And then it will be Adrian Klosmanil, who will be next up behind. There's a whole host of drivers in behind. Oh, there's a problem for Paul Chaos on the grid. Paul Chaos has got a major problem on the starting grid. Is Paul Chaos going to be able to get started? Yes, he is. Thank goodness for that. So here is the grid in full. Canato Lee and Vinnie Phillips from Bart Harrison and Avan Arias. Teofil Nal and Paul Chaos from Thomas Stravan and Adrian Maliero. Zachary David and Brandon Carr. Gaspard Lagaye and Kevin Rabin from Noah Montero and Ethan Ischer. Kimi Duron and Arthur Poulain from Joanna Lugia and Denis Kudivali. Sam Van Voskulen is alongside Mikel Mourinho. Uh, Thibaut Ramakers and Matteo Quintarelli. And then we have Aaron Ferrazzano and Adrian Klosmanil from Adrian Mustienis and Zach Scular, Alexi Constant and Daniel Dalakian, Eric Genet and Artaval Sword from Jan Paral, Adam Rahali, Gian Duran, Eduardo Dominguez, Finn McLaughlin and Iko Segret. So the 36 drivers now making their way around the circuit to uh, get themselves ready and prepared to get the tyres and the brakes up to the optimum temperature. Not easy to do in these wet conditions. The rain has eased a little bit, uh, ready for this uh, junior final. It was very heavy indeed during the uh, mini final, but it has now at least abated a little bit for the Junior X30 final. And that makes things a little bit tricky, actually, when they're all on wet tyres and the rain has stopped. And there could be a point in the race when grip is actually going to be quite tricky to find because the drivers are all obviously going to be wanting to utilise the wet parts of the circuit to get the water into the treads of the tyres in order to maximise the amount of grip available. But you can see there 
even on the main straight, you can see there is a little bit of spray coming off, but in essence, the track is actually drying out because the rain has stopped. You can see, particularly here at this far part of the circuit where it drains quite quickly, you can see that there is a little bit of rain, a little bit of water in patches of the circuit, but the track is essentially creating a drying line, and that could be rather costly for a few of the drivers who don't look after their tyres well in the early part of the race. It's all going to be about tactical strategy for the drivers through this race. Look, you can see even here on the run through to the hairpin, there are parts of the circuit where there is a lot of standing water and other parts where it's really going to struggle. The outside line on the hairpin there is definitely going to be an advantageous place to put your cart in order to get the tyres cooled down. On the inside line, there's not a lot of standing water at all. So this could be a very interesting X30 Junior Final. 14 laps of the circuit to come. And it's all going to be about how the drivers uh, get themselves together for this epic, epic encounter. Hello to everybody watching away from wherever you are watching around the world. I, I see we've got people watching from all over Europe and even all the way to Australia. Absolutely incredible to see. Hello, Tim Jolly. Hope you're doing a good job this morning as well. Canato Lee, Vinnie Phillips, Bert Harrison, Bart Harrison even, Ivan Arias, uh, Teofil Nile, Pod Chaos, Thomas Strawan, Adrian Maliado, Zach David and Brandon Carr. Are we going to go for a start? That looks a little bit of an early launch to me. Yep, yellow flags. That's a false start. You've just got to be so careful when you come off that final turn. You can't hit the throttle too early. Otherwise, you break up the whole tempo and the whole flow of the grid. And uh, it's an unfair advantage. That's the thing with rolling starts. You can't afford to hit the throttle too early. Uh, otherwise, it is a false start. And on that occasion, the Japanese driver, Kanato Lee, is getting a little bit too hasty. Well, the rough and tumble nature and the close quarters uh, banter between the drivers in the junior category means that Teofil Nal leads the championship coming into this race with 125 points. Bart Harrison and Paul Kaios have 114 points apiece. Kanato Lee, pole position for this race, has 111. And Vinnie Phillips has 108, compared to Ivan Arias on 101, after Poulain on 90, and Finn McLaughlin, who starts on the back row of the grid after his brilliant second position run at uh, Marienburg, uh, is on 86. So this could well be the... Uh, pre-final and final that he gets to drop because you drop a score over the course of the week of the season there are four rounds and you drop your worst pre-final score and your worst final score so even if you have a bad round you can drop that and still have a chance of winning the title and that is uh, partly because of the evenness of competition but it's also to help those drivers who can't necessarily afford to do all four rounds of the title fight if they have to miss one for whatever reasons or for COVID of course if they have to miss a particular round for travel restrictions or whatever they still have a chance to fight for the title and that's a, a wonderful incentive uh, from RGMMC and the whole karting fraternity here in the IAMI Euro Series. Canato Lee, Vinny Phillips, Bart Harrison, Ivan Arias. That looks better. Are we ready to start? Let's go, juniors. Into the first corner. Canato Lee holds the line from Bart Harrison. Vinny Phillips trying to keep the cart nice and strong out of final turn. And there's carts off everywhere. Oh, there's five of them at least gone. That looks like uh, 99 Thomas Straubin is in the mix there. So too Gaspar de la Calle. The 80s in there, the 58 is gone. Now that unfortunately is Alexi Constant. So there's quite a few drivers caught up in that one. Back at the front, Bart Harrison is in third position, uh, fourth position, sorry, in front of Teofil Nal. But it's as you were between Canato Lee and Vinnie Phillips. It was Strauben, David, Carr, Lagaye, and Constant that all spun off at turn one. Artaval Sort just about took avoiding action. And I think all five of them have managed to get through without too much drama. They've all recovered. Bart Harrison on the inside of Ivan Arias and gets through. So a nice maneuver there from Bart Harrison. He gets into third position. Yellow flags again. We've got somebody off on the far side there and recovering onto the circuit again. So someone just drip, uh, drifting off onto the course. Paul Chaos getting in there with Teofil Null and getting onto the grass temporarily as Kevin Rabin fights with Teofil Null. What a start from the Swiss. Kevin Rabin is doing an amazing job on the opening lap. Oh, and onto the grass again from Paul Chaos. He was lucky not to go off completely. So there's Canato Lee in front of Vinnie Phillips, Bart Harrison, and Ivan Arias from Teofil Nal. Then it's Kevin Rabin. What a start from the Swiss. And then Kimi Duron has made another excellent launch forward. Bart Chaos is eighth. Denis Kudavali is ninth. And Noah Montero making good progress up to tenth. Canato Lee holds the field. Here's the move from Kimi Duron coming. Onto the tail of Kevin Rabin. Just keeping an eye on the front fairing there. Hopefully that's not too low. 
obviously in the wet conditions it's a lot harder to keep control of the car as they battle for position so you always expect that there's going to be a tough race between the competitors in these conditions and if you are going to get a loose front fairing it's probably going to be in the wet we've got a spin up at turn four someone has spun in the hairpin now i'm just trying to make out who that is it's uh, one of the drivers in the midfield i think that is noah maton we'll double check as they come through but certainly someone down at the far end of the field who was in the middle of the pack as Canato lead now leads Bart Harrison, Vinnie Phillips and Bart Harrison side by side. Vinnie Phillips gets back into second place and holds onto his position. And the spin, I can tell you, actually came from Matteo Quintarelli. So Quintarelli spun the car and down the order he falls. What a shame. He was doing a great job up till that point. Finn McLaughlin, by the way, is flying. He's up into 18th position from the back row of the grid. Finn McLaughlin is absolutely storming through the pack. The Irishman in excellent form as Phillips and Harrison continue to battle for second position. And there's the late move from Bart Harrison into turn two, and he gets the place. Well done, Bart. Excellent overtaking move. Now Vinnie Phillips is going to have to try and respond. Tearfield Nile dives in for fourth position behind them and gets the place, but on the exit, he bangs wheels with Ivan Arias, and Arias gets the place back again. Teofield Nall commits to the inside line, slides in, Arias moves to the switch back, but Teofield Nall's got the place. Well done to the Frenchman. Excellent work. So now, with it standing as it is, Teofield Nall will still lead the title fight, but now only seven points ahead of Canato Lee, who is leading the race if it stays like this. So the battle continues. What an excellent charge forward this is so far. And an absolutely terrific run from the competitors. Thibaut Tourachou writing on, come on, Deerfield, come on, my man. He's doing a great job in fourth position at the moment as he battles in there with Ivan Arias. So these guys continue to duel for position. Oh, Kevin Rabin getting in there with Ivan Arias and Kimi Duron thought he had a chance to get through on the inside. He makes a lunge, but Kevin Rabin keeping the door firmly shut. Now, you can see on the main straight, the track is drying in places, so it's going to be very hard for them to keep the temperature in the wet tyres because they need to be running on full wet circuit, and it's getting half and half now. There are parts of the circuit that are very wet. Kevin Robin slides in on Arias, and Duron can get them both. Nicely done from Kevin Robin. Duron gets through. Chaos has a look on the inside of Arias, and now he's going to dive for the inside line. He takes them all on, but he's not going to have the speed off the turn, is he? Almost. Arias gets back through, Duron gets through, but Koyos definitely up for the scrap. Duron now on the inside of Arias, Arias cuts back for the switch and gets him back again straight away. Watch out for Dennis Kudavali, he's getting up alongside Kevin Rabin. Excellent racing, and now Arias side by side with Duron, they almost bang wheels, and Duron tries again on Arias. Rabin goes deep on the braking zone, Koyos commits to the inside curb, and Rabin gets squeezed. Dennis Kudavali tries to cut in round the outside, they both drift out, Kudivali gets them both, but Robin's got traction on the far side, yellow flags, because we've got a spin further back in the field, and it's uh, the 1-1-9. That, I'm afraid to say, is Thibaut Ramakers. So the Belgian Thibaut Ramakers is out of the race. What a shame. He was doing a great job this weekend, but unfortunately it's not to be in the final. He will have to come back at Castelletto in July. Down the straight. Here's the move from Duron on the inside of Arias. Go for it, mate. And he's got him done. Excellent work from Kimi Duron. So now, round the outside, Arias is holding traction. There's more water on the far side, and Arias is trying to commit to it. Goodness me, that would have been the overtaking move of the century if he had held that round the outside. Now he cuts for the inside. Oh, Duron goes off. Arias squeezes Duron, runs out of road, and Duron gets back on the course. But Kimi Duron has definitely lost about five places as a result of that. So he tries to get back into contention, but the move is certainly lost for the moment. And now Dennis Kudavali is going to try and take on the Frenchman. As, uh, oh, that's his teammate, actually. I apologize. That's the Portuguese driver, Noah Montero. He's taking on his Robin, gets the move on Isha on the exit. Isha gets him back. You wouldn't think they were teammates with the different color schemes of their car, but they are both in the Spiro Racing awning. There's two completely different liveries to their cards. There is Kimi Duron running in front of Miguel Mourinho. And Mourinho trying to get himself back into the hunt of this one as well. But Vinny Phillips and Bart Harrison have settled their differences for the moment with Bart Harrison in second place ahead of Vinny Phillips. 
Canato Lee running well, Bart Harrison in second place from Vinny Phillips, fourth place for Teo Pilnau, Ivan Arias and Paul Chaos. Noah Montero now in seventh place, a good run from him ahead of Dennis Kulivali. And this is the battle for ninth between Ethan Ischia, Kevin Rabin, Kimi Di and Mikko Mourinho. Paul Chaos on the inside there by the look of it. Chaos and Arias running side by side. As they duel for position, the teammates are getting a little bit squabbly here. Isha and Robin, let's look back. It's Arias who's got ahead of Chaos. He is there, so Arias holds the position in front of Paul Chaos. And here comes Noah Montero. Noah Montero doing a fantastic job in seventh place. This is easily the best junior race we've seen from him this year. As on the inside, Jerome squeezes Isha and gets there. Good move from Kimi Jerome. He's back on the horse very quickly. And now charging after Kevin Rabin. Ethan Isha wants revenge on the inside line. And Kimi Jerome lets him slide wide because he gets him straight back. Lovely bit of momentum there from Kimi Jerome. Good vision and good discipline. So Kevin Rabin is the next target. There's a big flap from Mikel Marino's front ferry. I wonder if that is a little bit loose. Because if it is, that could end up being a penalty. Of course, if your front fairing, the front section of your cart is loose, it comes with a five-second penalty. You cannot contest it. You cannot appeal it. Canato Lee leads. Bart Harrison second. Vinny Phillips third from Teofil Nal. And here is the battle for fifth position. Arias versus Chaos into the first corner. Chaos gets there. Slides into the inside of turn one. It's such a fast corner, even in the wet. You've got to be so sure that that car is going to travel to the right part of the apex when you get through. Teofil Nile now with the fastest lap of the race. The circuit may be coming back to those that are a little bit more slickshod in setup. Oh, and I think that's an off. It is indeed for Dennis Kudivali. Kudivali drifts wide and Kudivali off the circuit. Now here comes Arias on the inside of Pod Chaos again. Chaos drifts out wide. But you can see there's not a lot of standing water still on the circuit at various points on the course. So grip is gonna be very tricky. You can see both drivers sliding wide there. And here comes Noah Montero. He's gonna hunt them both down. Montero gets a good exit from the hairpin, but he's going to need to wait to see what happens with Arias and Chaos. He thinks about it and he's got time to play with. He doesn't wanna get into a silly incident too early on in the battle. So good vision from Montero. Another driver might've got stuck in and ended up in the wall or in the grass. But it's nicely handled there from Noah Montero. He knows he's got a chance. Oh, Gaspard Lagaye with a warning flag. Now that comes with a five-second penalty again, which cannot be contested or appealed. Phillips looks over his shoulder, knows that Teofil Nal is there. And here's the battle for fifth position. It's getting very heated. Chaos, Arias, Montero, Rabin, Duron, Curivali, Isha, Mourinho and Poulain. And Finn McLaughlin, 14th position. Where did he come from? Finn McLaughlin started 35th in this race, and at the halfway point, he's in 14th place. Go Finn! That is an excellent fight back. I tell you what, the Irishman is absolutely storming back into contention. Excellent work. So here's Robin, trying to defend again from Jerome. Jerome dives for the inside. Robin holds it to the slide, round the outside. Excellent. Keep, uh, keep that defensive line. In the wet, you can be a little bit more creative with where to put the cart. Whoops, a little bit of a love tap from Kimi Di Rome. This unsettles the cart briefly. Can Dennis Kudavali get the move? Not quite. Oh, there goes, uh, that's the 39 going off. That's even Arias. Arias has gone off there in the battle with Paul Chaos. And Finn McLaughlin is the next one to get through. So that puts Finn McLaughlin up into 12th position in behind after Poulain. I think Adrian Mustienis went off there as well. So that puts Pod Chaos into fifth and Noah Montero into sixth. What a shame for Ivan Arias. Bernardo Lee still in front, the Japanese driver from Bart Harrison, Vinnie Phillips, and Teofil Nal, the championship leader. Teofil Nal in number 27. Can Teofil get this opportunity on the 87? Vinnie Phillips from London in Great Britain. Vinny Phillips pushing hard here to try and stretch out the gap and get close to Bart Harrison. What a storming move from Kimi Jerome. Tries to get close to his teammate Montero and Kevin Rabin can't quite get it stopped. And that's why he drifts wide. Here comes Kudivali on the inside. Nicely done, but Jerome again gets the switchback maneuver. Kimi Jerome is getting some headlines here. Excellent TV time for him as he battles for position. <laughs> Kimi Jerome putting on a bit of a show for the fans back home. Noah Montero in sixth there in front of Kevin Rabin. So they come through again and some good battles throughout the field as the race continues on for the drivers in Junior X30. Some good squabbles out on track. Drivers desperately trying to stay off the grass. 
Canato Lee has a 1.8 second advantage over his uh, British colleague. I say British colleague, of course, Canato Lee is originally from Japan, but he races under a British license, and therefore, if he's on the top step of the podium, it will be the national anthem for the United Kingdom that plays. But everyone back home in Japan will know that this is a win for them. Bart Harrison second, Vinnie Phillips third, Teofield Nile in fourth. Look at the gap back to Bolkaios in fifth position. And there is Noah Montero doing an excellent job in P6. Best drive we've seen from him in Junior X30 so far. Looks like Kimi Jerome is actually using the Kaz Havercourt stance in the cart. I call it that because he was the first one I really saw doing it, and I think he inspired a lot of other drivers. Basically, you shift your body weight in the opposite direction to the corner you're driving in. He's getting a little bit more of a lean angle into the corner, but look, it, when you're turning right, you essentially lean left, and that basically shifts the center of gravity of the cart, and it keeps the balance. Look, he's going left, but he's leaning right. You can see that with Kimi Jerome in the 62, and that essentially corrects the center of gravity of the cart and gives you a little bit more traction in the slower apexes. It's a very clever stance, and these drivers are learning incredible professional uh, attitudes and how they can find a little bit more of a, uh, of a, a time gain and a, a big advantage on their opponents in very shrewd and clever style. So the drivers continuing on. Karen Trakovic uh, watching along from Australia. I love watching races in the wet, always full of action. They certainly are. Kimi Jerome having a look for the inside of Kevin Rabin. I think he might have made the move there into the inside. No, he didn't quite manage it. Bodkaios is still in fifth position, 10 seconds back from the race leader. Here's the move from Dennis Kudavali. Jerome tries to break the toe and chop across. And that was well handled by both drivers there. Kudavali just giving a little bit of a nudge to Kimi Jerome. That's the hurry up. Come on, get on with it. Get on with it or get out of the way, says Dennis Kudavali. And Kimi Jerome is now working to try and catch up to Kevin Rabin as they duel over eighth place. Another little nudge from Kudavali. And up to 10th position behind them. That's Finn McLaughlin. Finn McLaughlin has worked his way up to 10th position. He is saving his title attack here, Finn McLaughlin, with a storming drive. There he is. The 23 is up to 10th position from P35 on the grid. That is phenomenal from the young Irishman. Well done, Finn. That is such a comeback. And he is doing an excellent job. So Finn McLaughlin in P10. Everyone back home in Ireland could be absolutely ecstatic with that performance. 35th to 10th. That's one heck of a drive. I don't care where he finishes. He could be very happy with that. That's an excellent effort. And I will eat my hat if that hasn't made a lot of people back on the island. Very, very impressed. Dennis Gunavali on the inside of Kevin Rabin and gets into eighth place. That was an opportunistic manoeuvre. Jerome got the move to, oh, Kevin Rabin riding the rails there on the exit curb and that will cost him momentum. Ben McLaughlin may have a chance to catch him and gain another place. So McLaughlin is currently looking at 131 points in the standings. He's saving his title attack here with this. Of course, he could drop this round if it ends up being his worst score, but it just keeps him in contention. It keeps him in the hunt. There's the battle for second. That's Bart Harrison and Vinnie Phillips. Vinnie Phillips just trying to stay with him, but they'll be very happy to have displaced Teofield Nile from the podium because he was so dominant at Marienborg in the dry. Here in the wet at Suela in Spain, Teofield Nile is really struggling to keep up with these three. But then, of course, when does it rain uh, a lot in uh, Great Britain? Well, every five seconds or so. Oh, we've had a, a yellow flag. Someone's gone off at the hairpin. So they're just going through that patch. I think it was on the previous lap, so it's not a leading competitor, unfortunately. But we've lost someone from the fray. I think it's Brandon Carr who's actually gone off. Brandon Carr has gone out of the race, and so too has Daniel Dalakian. So the Armenian has gone off the road there. Daniel Dalakian, rather sadly, out of the race. And I think we may have lost uh, Adrian Klosmanil. Oh, no, Klosmanil is still going. But certainly we now have Tibor Ramakas, Brandon Carr, and Daniel Dalakian out of the race. What a shame for those three. But here is Bart Harrison. What a drive from the British driver. He's doing such a good job this season. He's going to be eight points behind Teofield Nile in the title fight. And the man who won back-to-back -back Ayami Winter Cups in 2020 and 2021. No one else has ever done it in any category. But Bart Harrison, back-to-back -back junior winner in the Winter Cup, is now looking very strong indeed to go for a title attack. He was very solid on the podium in Marienborg. He's very solid on the podium here at Zwerda. He just needs to keep it going for rounds three and four. We saw in the Mini X30 last year that just being in the right place at the right time gave Cahal Clark a shot at the Ayami X30 Mini 
uh, title and he won that brilliantly last year Bart Harrison is doing a very similar job here to get his junior campaign up to scratch and don't forget that next month Bart Harrison will be representing the United Kingdom in the FIA Karting Academy trophy so he's having an amazing 2021 season this is the year where he is going to break out of his shell and really show what he can do he was always very impressive but ever since that Winter Cup win last year he has been absolutely exceptional and it's just a matter of time before he shows the world what he can do last lap Canato Lee has got this race very much in the palm of his hand now he's been so strong in these conditions but then when you come from a country where the karting scene is very much about dealing with difficult conditions, Kanato Lee went from Japan, where the form is very much like that, into Britain, where it's almost identical. And now to Europe, he's been treated with very exceptional weather conditions. So Kanato Lee has been threatening to get onto the podium for a long, long time. All through last season, he was showcasing himself as a bit of a star in the making. We all, we all thought that Kanato Lee wouldn't take long to get onto the podium but we weren't quite sure if his first visit to the podium was going to be a victory or not. But here, the young Japanese star has done an exceptional job. He races under a British license, so it will be the Union flag and the national anthem for Great Britain when he gets to the podium. But Kanato Lee will be delighted. He carries the flag of Japan on the cart, as you can see. And Bruce, as he is known in the awning, is going to come through in fantastic fashion. Kanato Lee will come through the final couple of corners and splash his way to the victory. Enter the Dragon in 2021. Here comes Kanato Lee, smiling as he goes. Kanato Lee wins into Era. His first win in the Ayami Euro Series. And it's brilliant. Absolutely astonishing. He cannot believe what he's achieved. Over the weekend, he was quick, but he was never quite first. Now, on the day when it rains in Spain, he's mainly at the front and completely dominates in the final. Excellent run from Canato Lee, keeping that gap to Bart Harrison all the way throughout. Canato Lee triumphs for the first time in his Ayami Euro Series career. What a race, what a display, and what a victory. Canato Lee totally deserving of his first trip to the top step of the podium in the Ayami Euro Series. What a result. And he could be very happy with that one. His move to the Strawberry Racing Team, very aptly timed. And he will join Bart Harrison and Vinnie Phillips for an all United Kingdom podium. Well done to Canato Lee. Well done to Bruce, as they call him, after the great martial artist. But Canato Lee, what a job. What a great job. Excellent driving today in very tricky conditions. It sets things up quite nicely for a tricky Senior X30 final where they will deal with grip issues as well. And here's the result. Canato Lee takes the win from Bart Harrison and Vinnie Phillips. Teofil Nile and Bod Chaos in the top five from Kimi Jerome, Noah Montero, Kevin Robin, Finn McLaughlin in ninth position, and Ethan Ischier in the top ten. Dennis Kudavali 11th from Adrian Maniero, Adrian Mustienes and Ivan Arias from Alta Pulain, Mikel Mourinho, Thomas Strauben and Joan Alugia. 19th for Jan Paral in front of Zachary David. Adam Rahali made up 11 places to get to 21st in front of Eric Genet and Eduardo Dominguez. Zach Scular is next up from Gaspard Lagaye and Aaron Ferrazzano. Alexi Constant and Iko Segret. Sam Van Vosculen, Jan Duran, Arthur Valsort, Matteo Quintarelli and Adrian Klosmanil. The retirements rather sadly, Daniel Delakian, Brandon Carr and Thibaut Ramakers. None of those three made it to the flag. And there was a warning flag, of course, earlier in the race for Gaspard Lagaye. So he will take a five second penalty. That will only cost him two places in the final reckoning. Uh, three places, I do apologize. But it's going to get us a uh, very interesting uh, state of affairs as we get ready for the X30 senior final. Very exciting stuff, but as we can see around the course, the rain has actually stopped a little. And with the rain not coming down as intensely as it was before, it's still wet tires. Uh, there's no uh, cause about that one, but definitely the grip will be reduced as the race continues on. Because with the rain stopping, they're going to get drier and drier surfaces to play with out there on the circuit. It's going to need to be fortune that will favour the brave.
As you can see, the drivers are making their way to the starting grid in the X30 Senior Final. And it's going to be an absolutely spectacular race, that is for sure. The drivers will be pushing tooth and nail for the victory in what has already been an exciting and exceptional contest. But now the Senior X30 drivers will take to the circuit and give us the battle royale that we've been waiting for. We have our winners in X30 Mini and Junior. Now it is time to fight for the victory one more time in X30 Senior. And boy, oh boy, is it going to be a great race if what we have seen from the Mini and Junior Finals is anything to go by. It's going to be an absolutely sensational battle to the finish line. And the competitors will obviously be well aware of the fact that this is going to be a tough, brutal and exceptionally difficult race. But we will see some excellent displays of character and great style and determination from the competitors here. So we will see a wonderful race from the competitors. And it's all going to come down to the drivers in their positions on the starting grid. So let's talk you through the competitors one by one now that they are making their way to the starting grid. It is going to be the world champion in pole position, Callum Bradshaw, driving in a similar fashion to the way he did at Portimao six months ago to win the world title. He now sits in pole position for the IAMI Euro Series final here at Zuera in Spain, the second round of the title fight. Alongside him on the grid, a great switch to the Dan Holland Racing Team for Kean Shields. He really has made it a fantastic transition and he now sits on the front row of the starting grid. Amid the carnage and chaos, he has been there at the sharp end throughout. Third position, I can't quite believe I'm about to say this, Sam Belota. What an amazing weekend it has been for Sam. From 72nd on the starting grid, uh, originally from time qualifying, nobody would have thought he would fight his way through to third on the grid for the final. That is extraordinary. Sam Belota, without a doubt, the driver of the weekend so far. Let's see what he can get out of this final race. Pedro Hilbrand, the 2016 world champion, now finds himself fourth on the starting grid for this one. And it's going to be an absolutely sensational battle for the youngster as he continues to fight his way forward for Fusion Motorsport. Third row of the grid is an all British affair. Thomas Fleming will line up in fifth position on the grid as the DHR driver continues his quest for glory at the sharp end of the field in 246. 278 is in P6. Aaron Walker, the man who triumphed valiantly at Marienborg back in the first round of the title fight. He technically led the title fight coming into this one. So let's see if Aaron Walker can maintain his lead. He starts from P6 with still some ground to make up. Seventh on the grid, Louis Westover, pushing his weight around the circuit once again in 232. And in the wet conditions here at Zuera, he really has been extraordinary to work his way forward. Eighth position on the grid, 256. In the dry, Santiago Valve is unbeatable very nearly. But in the wet, he's had a little bit of a struggle to keep up at the sharp end. What can he do on Sunday for the final? We will find out very shortly indeed. Ninth position on the grid is the 218 of Henke Kauteren. The 218 there on the uh, very far right of your screen. Uh, Henke Kauteren will start ninth on the starting grid as he lines up alongside the 202. And that is Onzo Levesque for cutting Loisier Noyi. And let's not forget that it's going to be a tough title fight this year for Onzo Levesque. He will continue to fight his way from 10th on the grid. In 11th on the starting grid is the 201, the reigning IAMI Euro Series title winner, Guy Cunnington. And I have to say, a bit like Sam Belota, this is one heck of a comeback from Guy Cunnington. He was in the second chance heat coming into this uh, Saturday. And he ended up winning that from 31st on the grid. He has made up 20 places on the starting grid. And now he goes off P11. This could be quite an extraordinary return to form for Guy Cunnington. Alongside him on the starting grid in P12, it is Benjamin Hovelak as he goes off number 245 in 12th position on the starting grid. Always at the sharp end this weekend, hoping to remain there as the checkered flag falls. 13th position, Oliver Greenall. A rather unfortunate incident or two in the pre-final saw him go down from the front row of the grid to the middle of the pack. But Oliver Greenall has the mentality, the tenacity and the dictatorial battlecraft to work his way forward at the sharp end of the field. Alongside him on the starting grid, the ever-present Belgian in the 2-1-2, Yanni Steven Haydens for the Euro karting squad. He's never really been away from the top 10 this weekend, and it's good to see him still up at the front end of the field, albeit in 14th this time. 
15th on the starting grid, the former I Am A Euro Series title winner, Mark Kimber, in the 298. He will be there in the Strawberry Racing in the 15th position spot on the grid. He was very exceptionally battle crafty in the uh, pre-final. Lots of elbows out, and I'm sure he's going to do nothing but in the, in, in the battle for the final later. Onzo Peugeot will be next up in the PB cart as he lines up 16th on the starting grid from the outside of the eighth row of the grid. The exact uh, halfway mark of the grid is the next row. 17th on the starting grid for RSD karting is the Belgian talent Noah Maton. He will be there on the inside of row nine. And beside him, another amazing comeback from Rivaldo van der Westerlaken. He was the last man in the field this morning, 36th on the starting grid after finishing P6 in the second chance last night. Here he is, 18th on the grid for this one. Rivaldo van der Westerlaken has salvaged his weekend. Let's see what he can do to finish up in style. 19th on the starting grid. It's been a comedy of errors, really, for Matilda Olsen, none of which have been her own making. Her speed has been unquestionable this weekend. Fastest in practice, fastest in her warm-up session yesterday as well. So Matilda Olsen has the speed over one lap. Unfortunately, it's not really been going her way in terms of luck. She needs a little bit more of that, but if she rubs the Blarney Stone the right way, she can have a great charge forward in this last race of the day. Matilda Olsen lines up beside the number 297, Laurence de Sertua, the man who never takes a day off racing. He's there every single weekend, pretty much. And he is there racing again for LLK Belgium on the 10th row of the starting grid in P20. Another great fight back story from the number 21 on the grid, and that is cart number 220, Teresa Babichkova, another driver who fought her way through from the second chance heat and has stormed her way up the order to now start 21st on the starting grid for the TEPZ racing team. Great work from her thus far, and I have a feeling there's even more to come. 22nd on the starting grid, the Spanish talent Urbelt Moore in the dry, unstoppable, and in the wet, a very difficult proposition, but he had a lot of bad luck to take into the weekend as well. So hopefully Urbelt Moore can fight his way through. 23rd on the grid, it is Enzo Le Cruz, the Frenchman, and he will be there in the 23rd position alongside Ellie Goldstein. Two drivers up on the 12th row of the starting grid who deserve to be a lot higher after the work they put in. But misfortune has colored their latter part of the weekend. Hopefully they can storm back. It's a similar story for the men on row 13. Ivan Bataya was the original pole position sitter this weekend. He now starts 25th on the starting grid for the final, just to show you how different things can be. 26th on the starting grid, Morgan Porter will be there after a very tricky weekend at the office. He's always been able to fight back when he can, and hopefully the final is another opportunity to demonstrate that. And then comes the 27th man on the grid, Kalai Atkins for crop promotions. He was extraordinarily good in qualifying. It's never really gone his way over the course of the heats, but now he's got a chance to salvage something again. And alongside him on the grid is the Spanish talent, Eloy Gonzalez in the FA Racing Espana colors. There are a handful of other drivers that we'll talk about as they come through the grid. So Callum Bradshaw and Kean Shields on the front of the grid from Sam Balota and Pedro Hilprand, Thomas Fleming and Aaron Walker, Louis Westover and Santiago Valde, Henke Kauterin and Enzo Levesque from Guy Cunnington and Benjamin Hovelak. Then it is Oliver Greenall and Yannis Steven Haydens from Mark Kimber and Enzo Peugeot, Noah Maton and Rivaldo van der Westerlaken from Matilda Olsen and Laurence de Sertua, Teresa Babichkova and Herbert Moore, Enzo Le Cruz and Ellie Goldstein, Ivan Bataya, Morgan Porter, Kalai Atkins and Ellie Gonzalez. Then it is Alexandra Mono and Hugo Natteril, Lazar Latigo and Lucas Tileman. Clarissa Dervich, who's been one of the fastest drivers all weekend, way down in 33rd after retiring from the pre-final. Evan Becerra, likewise, in 34th. Dan Antunia spun out on lap one of the pre-final. He's on the back row. And Clayton Ravenscroft failed to get to the gate on time. He will go from the back of the grid. So there are several amazing stories in this Senior X30 final. We're going to have the prospect of Clayton Ravenscroft and Clarissa Dervich charging their way through from the back of the field, going through the grid like cannon fire. And then the rest of the battlers in the midfield that need to get themselves back up into position, the likes of Kimber, Maton, Greenall, Cunnington, Olsen, Lesatua, Babichkova, Goldstein, Bataya, Porter. There's so many big names in that midfield that want to try their way forward. But they're all going to try and take on the reigning FIA karting world champion. Oh, something's come off on the main straight. Something's come off a cart on the main straight. Now, what is that? Is that an airbox? Something that's come off the cart there on the main straight. 
So somebody is definitely going to get a technical flag. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that is. The marshal recovers it quickly. Well, something's definitely come off the card there. I'm not entirely sure what that is. That looks like a chain guard, potentially. So something definitely uh, coming off the cart there on the main straight. So somebody's race is about to have a rather untimely end because if that's, come, uh, if that's parted company with the cart, that's going to be a technical flag for somebody. We need to try and figure out who that is uh, that's had something come off the cart there. As that is a very dramatic start to the race for the Senior X30 competitors. But they're all going to try and get one over on the reigning FIA karting world champion, Callum Bradshaw. There he is, 320 warming up the tyres and brakes to get them to the optimum temperature. But when there's very little standing water at various parts of the circuit, this is going to be a tricky final. There's no two ways about it. Their tyres are going to be screaming hot uh, at the halfway point of the race, and it's going to be about those who can look after the tyres well that will be able to get the benefit. So let's find out how it goes. Callum Bradshaw from Key and Shields, Belota, Hiltbrand, Fleming, Walker, Westover, Valve, Calterant, Levesque, Cunnington, Hovelak, Greenalt, Stephen Haydens, Kimber, Peugeot, Matton van der Westerlaken, Olsen and the Setua. Come off the final turn. It's a good run from Bradshaw. Is that going to be a good start? We're racing into error. Up to the first corner, chopping across on the inside line. Bradshaw drifts out wide. Is there going to be a good start as they come up towards turn one? So far, so good into turn two. And Bradshaw holds the lead. Belota into second place, I do believe. And Keen Shields is there in third. So an excellent scrap. They all gesture for position. And now jockey away up towards the braking zone for turn four into the hairpin. Bradshaw leads. 269 and Sam Belota is second. And as they wrestle their way through the hairpin, two or three of them are going to come onto the grass. And they do. Westover drops down the order. As to does the 201 of Guy Cunnington. Now they're coming to the hairpin. Oh, and there's more trouble. There's more drama. Three or four cuts going off. That is the 255 that disappears in the middle of the fray. Now I'm afraid to say that is Lucas Tileman. He was already struggling in the mid-pack. The start is apparently under investigation as well. And there comes the move on the inside from the 346. That is Pedro Hilbrand working his way forward once again. And look at this, Sam Belota is already starting to pressure Callum Bradshaw. I did wonder how long it was going to be before Sam Belota was giving pressure to the reigning world champion. But Sam Belota, having made the good start, has gone into second position and is now racing after the world champion. Can Sam Belota get him? Can he literally go from 71st in time qualifying to the victory? Belota is giving it everything. For those who champion the underdog, that's the man you want to root for. Sam Belota going head-to-head -head with the world champion of 2020. Oh, nice move on the inside from Walker as he banters with Pedro Hilbrand. Slides across, keeps his position round the outside. That is a big lunge from Yanis Steven Aidens. He can't quite cut in round the outside without getting on the grass, but he gets side-by-side -side with Hilbrand anyway and still gets past him. Yanis Steven Aidens wrestles his way past Pedro Hilbrand on the grass if necessary. And now he tries to get through on Walker. Walker shuts that door quickly. So Aaron Walker battling away in fifth position in front of Yanis Steven Aidens, still holding the mark on the inside line. Hilbrand dueling away with Onzo Levesque. And in there is Nosatua. Oh, Levesque goes wide, gets on the grass, gets back onto the course again. Hilbrand now dueling with Leceptua. Here is Walker as he duels with Yanis Steven Aidens. Stephen Aidens trying to come through. Yeah, Stephen Aidens is not going to get past Aaron Walker without a very tough battle. You can see that there's not a lot of standing water on the circuit at all. As uh, Lawrence the Seltower uses that Kaz Havercourt line to perfection. Turns to the right, leans to the left, and it corrects the center of gravity of the car. Here comes the move from Kean Shields on the inside of Thomas Fleming, and that gets him up into third position. So Kean Shields now setting off after his teammate Sam Belota. Belota is doing everything he can to try and close up on Callum Bradshaw. Callum Bradshaw, who won the world title at Portimao six months ago, is now trying to stay in front of Sam Belota. It's a very tough battle behind between Aaron Walker in fifth and Yannis Stephen Aidens in sixth. Stephen Aidens squeezed there, but pl still plenty of good racing between these two. It's hard, but it's fair. That is exactly how it's supposed to be. Lawrence the Setua having a great race up to seventh place already from 20th on the grid. What a storm through from Lawrence the Setua. And Hiltbrand is there in eighth place. Other big moves through the field. Mark Kimber up five to 10th. Matilda Olsen's going beautifully. She's up to 11th from 19th on the grid. So some good works there. 
And Teresa Babichkova is up to 13th as well from 21st on the grid. So some exceptional performances throughout the field here. But Callum Bradshaw is holding on to his advantage in front of Sam Belota and Kim Shields. Three tenths of a second only between Bradshaw and Belota. Belota was actually slightly quicker than Callum Bradshaw in the early part of the race. Sam Belota looking behind him. I wonder if there was another piece of uh, car body work on the uh, circuit there. Well, the car is shredding parts. Kim has got past Levesque to get up into ninth position. Here comes the Anistimonadens. Another crack at Aaron Walker. Can't get by. Even when Walker drifts a little bit wide, Yannis Stevenayden still has the traction to uh, fend off the position, but not to take it. As Carissa Dervich has not made the progress she would like to have done, she's 34th at the moment. Herbert Moore has dropped to the back of the field. Kian Shields with the fastest lap of the race in the bid to close up on Bradshaw and Belota. This is going to be a tough race, you know, because now the rain has stopped and the track is drying rapidly. So there's not going to be a lot of water for the drivers to utilise. But if Callum Bradshaw finishes like this, he's going to take the lead of the driver's title in front of Aaron Walker. And it'll be by three points. So Walker could do with making up a couple more positions to get himself back into the lead of the title fight, with them both being a few points ahead of Onzo Levesque and Samba Lota, who in second place is looking to become a real serious factor in this title fight. And let's not forget that there are two rounds to go after this one, and you can drop your worst score. So there's still a lot of things that can happen in this Ayama Euro Series title fight in Senior X30. Across the line, Belota checks over his shoulder. Shields is there, but not close enough yet. There's Fleming in fourth, Walker in fifth, and there's Onzo Levesque going side by side with Pedro Hildebrand. That'll be a feather in the cap. Look at me, Mum, I just overtook a world champion. Excellent work there from Onzo Levesque. He'll be happy with that one. Ian Shields doing a great job there in third. And in fifth position is Aaron Walker. We're watching him on screen. Ian Shields with another new fastest lap as he tries to bear down on Bradshaw and Belota. But Ian Shields, the fastest lap of the race, the 117.007, just like Bond. 202. Onzo Levesque chasing after Mark Kimber. There is the race leader, Callum Bradshaw. There is second, Sam Belota. So it's not a big lead. And there's Kean Shields catching them rapidly. There's a good chance here for Kean Shields if he just keeps on looking after the tyres. There's a long way to go. 12 laps left of this Cedar X30 final. And it's not going to be a soaking wet final by any stretch of the imagination. We're well into it now. So it's going to be wet till the end, of course. But it's going to be about how much traction can the drivers get off each corner. Yanis Stimonadens all over the back of Aaron Walker. We come off the hairpin. Out of the final turn and onto the main straight. Look how quickly Shields is getting close to Belota. Now this could be where they could snatch the win away from Bradshaw. If Shields is smart, he will work with his teammate to close up on Callum Bradshaw. And this is going to take a while, but we've got a while. They've got 11 laps left of this circuit. It is the longest circuit in the AMI Euro Series, and they're currently doing 117s because they don't have a lot of grip to play with. The rain has stopped, they're on wet tyres, and the tyres are not biting into the road at all. So, Kian Shields actually does a 169. He's the only driver to break into the 116s so far. Everybody else is in the 117.1s, 117.3s range. So, Kian Shields is making good work, and this will be down to tyre pressures probably more than anything else. They've just got it right. Mark Kimber seventh, Lawrence Lasselle to an eighth, there on your screen. Ninth place behind them is Onzo Levec, and then Matilda Olsen has worked her way into 10th position. The Swedish driver doing an exceptional job of getting herself back into contention. Still a long way to go in this final, a lot can happen. This is a waiting game, but this is also about being very streetwise and very technically smart. Hiltbrand has drifted away now, down to 11th position. What a shame. Teresa Babichkova is doing an exceptional job. She's up to 12th in front of Westover and Greenall. Here we go. Shields has decided to go for the move. Kean Shields in the second place. Now that's going to hold the charge a little bit because now Belota will want to get that second place back. But Kean Shields has a real chance. He's been threatening a top step at the podium in the AMI Euro Series throughout his three and a half years in the campaign. And he's never quite managed it. Kean Shields has always come close, but not quite managed the victory. He's had seconds, he's had thirds, but now for Kean Shields, it's the time to go one better and grab the top step. 
He was such an incredible revelation when he came into the IME Euro Series paddock back in 2018 as a privateer, and he was third in his first appearance at Valencia as a privateer in the Junior X30 category. Now he's in senior, and he's got a chance to close in on, catch, and maybe even pass the reigning world champion. That would be a massive feather in the cap for Kean Shields, but clearly the DHR twins, I'm sorry, trio with Fleming in fourth place. I've got something now quite nicely here. Hillbrand seems to have gone off. I think Pedro Hillbrand has gone off the road. Pedro Hillbrand has had a moment somewhere and dropped down out of the top 20. How have we just lost the world champion from the race? Pedro Hillbrand appears to have disappeared in sector two. And I think Pedro Hillbrand may have dropped out of the race. Can't see him anywhere on screen. So we'll have to see how far down the order he's dropped. I think he got into an incident there with Teresa Babichkova. Babichkova has continued in 13th place. Hillbrand, I think, has continued, albeit way down at the back of the field this time. So we'll keep an eye on it, but Hillbrand, I think, has actually dropped. No, I think he's gone out of the race. Hillbrand is, oh no, he has returned to the racetrack, way down in dead last. And I think he's now brought it towards the pit lane. We've got a warning flag for Rivaldo van der Westerlaken. That is unfortunate. So Rivaldo van der Westerlaken, rather sadly, is now out of the running because that's a five second penalty he'll take. He could still make up some ground as Callum Bradshaw sets the fastest lap of the race and he needed to. A 116.7. The track is drying according to the timing screen in front of me, and that is the key factor with them all being on wet. Grip is going to be impossible in a couple of laps because the track will dry very quickly indeed. And I'm sorry to say that Pedro Hillbrand has not been able to recover and he is out of the race. That is a shame for the 2016 world champion. So Hillbrand is out of it. Bradshaw, Shields, Balota, Fleming, Walker, Stephen Haydens, Kimber and the Setua, and then Enzo Levesque and Matilda Olsen in the top ten. So it's been an interesting one from the far side of the course. Walker is still keeping in front of Yannis Stephen Haydens. He will not let the Belgian get through. But Mark Kimber now sets the fastest lap of the race in seventh position, trying to close up on these two. You can see just a little change of setting. Oh, and that's Clarissa Dervich. What a shame. Her weekend was exceptional before the pre-final. Clarissa Dervich completely not deserving this at all. And uh, Clarissa Dervich was in third position at one phase of the weekend, looking so good for a podium this weekend. But ever since this morning, it's just been an absolute nightmare. What a shame for Clarissa Dervich. So uh, her race is now over. You've got to feel for her. She had such a great opportunity this weekend to get a podium and probably should have done. It's all come apart. So the race continues on, minus two of the Spanish stars, Pedro Hilbrand and Clarissa Dernic. Something is definitely on the course there at the final corner. There's definitely a piece of cart that is in the middle of the circuit. Quite, can't quite figure out what that is. But certainly there is uh, something missing from a cart in the middle of the final corner. Can't quite make out what it is though. Mark Kimber with another faster snap at 116.3. So here we go. The track is definitely getting drier very quickly. But the, the, well, this is what will happen. The first couple of laps, the circuit will get faster. The tyres will get hotter. And then they'll become almost undrivable. Because then the car will start to slide all over the place. It'll be worse than driving in the wet would be. Because wet tyres on a dry track are just impossible. Just ask Perry McCarthy. He knows all about that one. Callum Bradshaw, what a lunge from a million miles away from Aaron Walker to tuck into the inside of Fleming. That almost worked, but in doing so, he's lost the place to Yannis Stephen Haydens. My goodness, Aaron Walker just bites the bullet and goes for it. You've got to give him 10 out of 10 for bravery. Sadly, zero out of 10 for execution. Here comes Stephen Haydens now on the inside of Fleming, and this is what I was talking about. You're going to struggle to have any grip now at all, and cars are sliding around all over the shop. Fleming loses out to Walker and Kimber, and now Walker's going to get his opportunity on the other Stephen Haydens with assistance from Kimber. Six laps to go. Anything can still happen in this one. But look, everybody's struggling for grip. Kimber Banzai's and gets them both. Amazing! Mark Kimber storms in and gets past Stephen Aidens and Walker. 
this is the what the, this is the factor we were talking about no one's going to have a decent amount of grip at all and it will all come down to driver instinct and kimber's got that in spades as we know this is going to come down to driving talent now pure and simple fleming sweeps in on walker gets the place up into sixth position as kimber now finds himself p4 and this has all become a very interesting battle for the drivers up at the sharp end. They've just got to try and keep it on the road now. Bradshaw is extending the gap a tiny bit over Kean Shields, but not enough for anything to really change in terms of momentum. So Mark Kimber hanging on to fourth position. Anytime you get the chance to cool the tyres off by going onto the wetter part of the circuit, that will actually be a benefit as Fleming gets back on Walker and retaliates to get himself back into that original sixth place. Bradshaw, Shields and Belota. What a podium that's going to be if it stays this way. Here's the battle for fourth. This is Kimber and Yanis Steven Haydens now battling. Fleming in front of Aaron Walker. Then Enzo Levesque, Matilda Olsen and Laurels Le Certua. So some good reasons to be cheerful if you are Mark Kimber fighting for position again up into fourth place. And that will put him fifth in the title standings with two rounds still to go. And you never know what's going to happen at Castelletto. It could be a very, very opportunistic uh, moment for him to gain momentum and get back into contention again. So you've just got to keep it lit. You've got to keep pushing and working hard. So far, so good. So here's Mark Kimber, along with Yanis Steven Hayden. It's the battle for fourth place still going strong. Oh, and that looks like two cards coming together there. Fleming going wide. And was that Fleming and Walker just getting a little bit too close together? As long as the Celtua gets through, did Walker lose a bit of ground as well? Well, not as much, but Onzo Levesque is going to get the move as a result. So lost momentum for Walker. And Walker and Levesque uh, Walker having a good battle, but at the expense of Fleming. Fleming's lost a lot of ground there. So Walker now trying to get back through on the inside of Matilda Olsen and drifts the card across the line. Matilda Olsen will be... A little bit circumspect about that one. Just, just the Lawrence the to work. Come on, we can get back past Aaron Walker. We can do that. As Thomas Fleming and Louis Westover go side by side in a turn one. And Fleming holds on for the moment. Oliver Greenell is now the fastest man on track. He's just gone on 1.15.5. So this is again how quickly the carts are going around the circuit now rapidly. Olsen and the Seltua get the move on Walker. This is not good news for Aaron Walker. There's a good threat of him losing second in the driver's rankings for this, unless he can get back on the inside of Lesertua quickly, which he does. Lesertua on the grass. Somehow he saves it and manages to recover and get back on the inside of Greenall while Westover battles with Walker. And here comes Tom Fleming, banging wheels with Lesertua. Fleming trying to hold it. And on the inside of all of them, Greenall tucks in on Lesertua. Fleming picks up the pieces. Thank you, boys. I'll have that. And now Westover cuts in on the inside of Walker. Fleming is there again. Westover gets Walker wide and Fleming gets through as well. Teamwork and Walker on the grass. Loses a massive amount of places. And now Calteron, I think that is. No, that's Cunnington. Cunnington gets through on Walker. Down to 13 goes the former title fight leader. And now Walker trying to battle side by side with the reigning Euro Series title winner. Walker is trying to become the title winner this year. Greenall on the inside of Fleming in a turn one. This is only a three lap sprint now to the finish and Bradshaw has got a decent advantage over Kean Shields. A good squabble as the Seltua tries to get back on terms with Greenall. Here's Guy Cunnington having a go at Walker. He's gonna box him in behind Fleming. Walker does not respond to that. He gets them both back on the switch. Excellent from Aaron Walker. Nicely judged. Now Cunnington will get back for the inside line. Fleming's going to get past the inside of both of them. Thomas Fleming, take a bow. That was awesome. Now Cunnington responds. Gets on the inside. Walker gets them both. Amazing. What a brilliant race this is. Oh, Cunnington drifts into the back of his teammate. Somehow they survive it. Amazing racing at Suero. It just gets better and better every lap. When you ask Senior X30 drivers to race on a circuit with ridiculously reduced grip, you're going to get an absolute battle royale. The Seltua diving for the inside of Fleming now. He takes the place. Fleming keeps it around the outside, though, and boxes the Seltua in. Babichkova and Calteron now with a chance to respond and get through. Babichkova gets there. Calteron is on the hunt for the Seltua. Two laps to go. The Seltua and Fleming on the move. Oh, the Seltua squeezes Fleming. 
and nearly nudges him into a spin. Goodness me, that would have been a big one for Fleming. But Babichkova picks up the pieces and gets in behind Fleming. Lesiatua responds on the exit though. And now Lawrence Lesiatua can challenge Fleming again into the hairpin. They both nudge out wide. Kalterin getting on the inside of Babichkova. Takes the place. And now we've got Fleming swarming around on the inside of Lawrence Lesiatua. Drifts into the side of Kalterin. And Kalterin goes off. Henke Kalterin is not impressed. He recovers behind Onzo La Cruz. But Fleming and Kalterin get too close for comfort. Well, there is Gian Shields. Try as he might. He has done everything he can to try and get close to the world champion. You've got to give him a massive amount of credit. In his first weekend for Dan Holland Racing, Kean Shields has been majestic and done a brilliant job. But you're not going to catch the world champion when he's in this form. Into the final lap goes Callum Bradshaw. He won the world championship in excellent style earlier in the six-month period. Oh, someone's gone off on the far side. Sorry, I got distracted there because we've had an off on the far side. That was Lucas Tileman. Lucas Tileman is out. He almost trips over the car to add insult to injury, but Lucas Tileman out of the race. Mark Kimber sets the fastest lap. We're in the 114s now. And fourth place is a great return for Mark Kimber's efforts. But here is the man who has done a fantastic job all race. In fact, all Sunday, Callum Bradshaw has reminded everybody what he can do and how well he can do it. Into the final sector he will come. And Callum Bradshaw, the world champion of 2020, he didn't quite think it could be possible at the time. He was so surprised that he could make it work. But here at Suena, he's proving to everybody why it was possible, how it was possible. Out of the race there goes Lazar Latigo. But Callum Bradshaw is coming through and the world champion of 2020 is going to be triumphant in Suera to get his Euro Series title attack back on track. Callum Bradshaw wins in Suera and it's mighty, mighty victory. Oh, Callum Bradshaw, the world champion is back and he's on top form. Keir Shields in second, Sam Belota in third, Mark Kimber in fourth, Yanis Divinadens in fifth. That will silence the doubters, those who said Callum Bradshaw got into a bit of a heated moment at the end of Marienborg. They would have said, well, what's a world champion doing getting in a heated situation? But Callum Bradshaw responds admirably. This is what I can do. This is why I'm the world champion. Take that. Great stuff from Callum Bradshaw. A masterful display and an exceptional drive from Callum Bradshaw today on a day when the Union flag was permanently atop the podium here in Duera, and it will adorn all three classes. But Callum Bradshaw, the reigning world champion, reminds everybody why. An excellent job, absolutely masterful display from Callum Bradshaw in the wet today. In the dry, he was quick, there's no doubt about that, but in the wet, he was dominant. Callum Bradshaw takes the victory in fine style from Kean Shields and Sam Belota. Mark Kimber in fourth position from Yanis Divinadens and Enzo Levesque. Matilda Olsen in a brilliant seventh place to fight back. Louis Westover in eighth from Oliver Greenall and Laurence Le Sertua. Guy Cunnington 11th ahead of Aaron Walker, only 12th in this one. Eddie Goldstein fights beautifully to 13th from Teresa Babichkova, another great comeback. Santiago Valve, Thomas Fleming, Morgan Porter and Ivan Bataya. Then Henke Kalterin, 19th ahead of Onzo Peugeot. Benjamin Hovelak and Enzo Le Cruz. Good drive from Ravenscroft to 23rd from Carly Atkins and Rivaldo van der Westerlaken. Alex Mono and Hugo Natarel from Urbelts Moor and Dan Antunez. Eloy Gonzalez, Evan Becerra, Noah Maton and Lazar Lartigo, who retired from the race on the final lap. Lucas Talman, Clarissa Dervich and Pedro Hilbrand retired a short while before that. All that remains here at the Ayama Euro Series 2021 is to take you to the podium ceremony, which we will do in a few minutes from now. But it's going to be a very happy podium for all three of the drivers on the podium in each category. And of course, their team managers who will also receive a trophy on the top step. But what a fabulous race it's been here at Zwerda in each of our three categories. The podium is coming soon.
So, ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ourselves ready for the IAMI Euro Series podium here at the Circuito Internacional Zuera. We will have the top three drivers on the podium from the mini, junior and senior X30 classes, as well as the winning team manager in each of the categories. The podium ceremony will be coming up in just a few short minutes. Attention Paddock, attention Paddock. Will all of the drivers and team managers from the top three positions in the IAMI Euro Series Mini X30, Junior X30 and Senior X30 battle. That is the top three drivers and the winning team manager in Mini, Junior and Senior X30. Please make their way to the podium as the podium ceremony will be taking place in a few short minutes. So attention Paddock, attention Paddock, once again, we need the winning three drivers, the top three drivers in the mini, junior and senior X30 categories and the winning team manager as well in each class to make their way to the podium for the prize giving ceremony.
So once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting our drivers ready for the podium ceremony in the IAMI Euro Series X30 for the Mini, Junior and Senior categories 2021 here at Zuela. It'll be a couple of minutes time. We need to make sure we have the winning team managers as well as the winning drivers in each of the categories. So if we can please have the winning team manager as well as the winning drivers in the top three positions. Thank you. So a reminder to everybody that, of course, we're going to be uh, getting ourselves ready for the third round of the IAMI Euro Series, which is going to be taking place from the 29th of July through to the 1st of August at one of our favorite locations, the Siete Larghi Kart Circuit at Castelletto de Branduzzo in Italy. All the details can be found on the website, iamieuroseries.com. And, of course, we would love you to get your entries in as soon as is humanly possible once the entries open so that we can welcome you back for the third round of the 2021 title fight.
So it's time to get the podium ceremony underway here at the IAMI Euro Series, promoted by RGMMC at the Circuito Internacional Zuera 2021. We start with our podium procedure for the Mini X30 drivers after a fabulous final. In third position for the United Kingdom, Harrison Mackey! An excellent result for Harrison today. A brilliant performance over the course of his second final in IAMI Euro Series 2021 and a podium visit. In second position for Spain, Luna Flusha! An excellent race from Luna Flusha to get to this second position on the podium and an absolutely perf a perfect performance. There's going to be more from her, I'm sure, when we get to Castelletto. But your race winner for the United Kingdom, Roman Kamyab! <laughs> for the second time in 2021 and the first time in the Euro Series, it is Roman Kamyab on the top step of the podium in the paddock. And we welcome the winning team manager for Fusion Motorsport. Please welcome Neil Duran! It's not every day that a team gets to lock out the podium in a Mini X30 category, and it's a wonderful day for the Fusion Motorsport team. They can celebrate in style on the Zwerda podium. And in deference to our driver on the top step of the podium, the national anthem for the United Kingdom. A fantastic job from our drivers on the podium. They will raise their trophies one by one. In third position for the United Kingdom, Harrison Mackey! And in second position for Spain, Luna Flusha! And your race winner here at Zuera for the United Kingdom, Roman Kamyab! And to the winning team manager for Fusion Motorsport, Neil Duran! So our drivers and winning manager will pose for photographs on the podium here at Zuera. It's been a fantastic day for Mini X30 if you're wearing blue, orange and white. Ladies and gentlemen, your drivers on the podium, Harrison Mackey, Luna Flusha and your race winner, Roman Kamyab! Thank you very much, drivers. We will see you back again at Castelletto di Branduzzo in Italy at the Siete Larghi Kart Circuit, where we will continue our journey in Mini X30 for the AMI Euro Series. So let's welcome the drivers to the podium in the Junior X30 category. It has been a phenomenal battle over the course of the weekend. In third position for the United Kingdom, Vinny Phillips. Excellent performance from Vinny. A really solid weekend and great to see him and take his rightful place on the podium here at Zuera. In second position, also for the United Kingdom, Bart Harrison. A phenomenal drive all the way through the weekend and a valid display to put him onto the podium once again. And your race winner representing the United Kingdom, Kanato Lee! An excellent job from the youngster. Her first visit to the podium and on the top spot. And of course, we welcome the winning team manager for Strawberry Racing, Paul Spencer! 
an excellent display and a wonderful day for the Tony Kart brand with all three steps on the podium represented. And it's a fabulous victory for Kanato Lee in deference to the race winning driver, the national anthem for the United Kingdom. A great job from our drivers on the podium in Junior X30. In third position from the United Kingdom, Vinny Phillips. And in second position, also from the United Kingdom, Bart Harrison. And your race winner in Junior X30 from the United Kingdom, Kanato Lee. And to our winning team manager for Strawberry Racing, Paul Spencer. So our photographers will grab the winning shot with all of the trophies lifted a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, your Junior X30 podium from Zuera, Vinny Phillips, Bart Harrison, and your race winner, Kanato Lee. Congratulations to our juniors. We will see you back in action at Castelletto di Brandut. So please don't disappear because we have television interviews to do after the podium ceremony. We will keep them as quick as possible. We know, of course, you all have places to go to, as of course do I. So we will welcome our drivers to the podium now for the Senior X30 category. What an incredible weekend of racing it has been in the seniors. In third position, representing Belgium, Sam Balota. An excellent recovery, 71st in timed qualifying to fight back to the podium is absolutely extraordinary in the Senior X30 field. What a display. In second position for Great Britain, Kian Shields. A great drive in his first weekend in the DHR overalls and a fantastic result for Kian Shields in second position, his best result in the IAMI Euro Series. But your race winner for the United Kingdom, Callum Bradshaw! The world champion returns to the top step of the podium in the IAMI Euro Series in a fantastic style after a great wet weather display here on Sunday. And for the winning team as well for Strawberry Racing, welcome back to the podium, Paul Spencer! The boys and girls in green, red and white have been exceptional today in X30 in junior and senior. And now in deference to the race winner, the national anthem for the United Kingdom. A sensational race weekend for Senior X30. In third position for Belgium, Sam Balota. And in second position for the United Kingdom, Kian Shields. And your race winner also for the United Kingdom, Callum Bradshaw. And for the winning team, Strawberry Racing, welcome back again, Paul Spencer. 
So our photographers will get their winning shots for the drivers in the Senior X30. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Belota, Kian Shields, and your race winner, Callum Bradshaw! That is all she wrote here at Circuit Internacional Zuera. We will see you back again at the third round of the championship on the beautiful Siete Larghi Kart Circuit at Castelletto de Branduzzo in Italy at the end of July. From all of us here, it's been a fantastic battle and a great display. We'll see you all again next time. From all of us here at the Circuit Internacional Zuera, adios! Thank you.